Good evening. <laughs> We'd like to welcome everybody to the February 13th meeting of the St. Mary's County Planning Commission. There are two sign-up sheets in the foyer for our hearing this evening. One is a sign-up sheet if you're speaking this evening. The other is a sign-on sheet for attendees of the hearings. In case any further information needs to be sent to you regarding the cases, please make sure that you have signed up on one of those sheets. Our meeting this evening is being recorded for the public record. Any comments made by anyone present must be recorded as part of the record. Therefore, if you have anything to say, you must come up to one of the microphones provided. Your comments cannot be recorded and placed in the record unless they are directed to a microphone. And please, uh, anybody and, and board members also uh, speak up close to the microphone. If you can't hear yourself in the room, that means that there's a possibility that the recording's not gonna pick you up very well. So everybody pull your mics up close, please. Um, you are to direct your statements, questions, and responses to the board only, and we will direct them to the appropriate person for an answer. Uh, we ask you to please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anyone testifying or asking questions during our public hearings will be required to take an oath, and I thank you for your cooperation. Also, if you could silence your cell phones at this time, too. Uh, on our agenda this evening, let's see. After a review and approval of the January 23rd, 23rd um, minutes, uh, we have one public hearing this evening. That's number CSP 22 0234. Um, the, ooh, a bit. the owner is. Um, Golden Beach Develop, or the owner, the owner is Golden Beach Properties LLC, um, for a concept site plan, and the action requested is a review of a concept site plan for a 20,599 square foot supermarket, a 30,000 square foot of buildings for the flea market and fairgrounds use, re uh, relocated from the farmers market, a 5,200 square foot Chick Fil A with a drive-through. 2,675 square feet of retail space pad sites and, and 2,437 square feet uh, for a restaurant pad site. Uh, after that, we'll um, check on any new anything and then uh, followed by adjournment. At this time, I'll let the board members introduce theirself, uh, starting with Mr. Brown. John Brown. Kim Summers. Patty Robrecht. Howard Thompson. And Joe Van Kirk. Joe Fazekas. And Merle Evans. Okay. Also with us this evening uh, from the Department of Land Use and Growth Management, we have uh, their Deputy Director, Courtney Jenkins. Their Administrative Coordinator uh, is uh, Jessica Birch. And we have our Planner, Mr. Larry Everhard, here this evening. Also, Brandy is home this evening. Um, I can't hear you. Can't hear me? Yeah. Okay. Amy, can you adjust the volume in the room, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Can, how about now? Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay. Shoot that. I, I'm, I'm looking down right now, but if you can't hear us during the hearing, just give me one of those, and I'll make sure we, we do some adjustments. Um, Brandy's not with us this evening. We hope she feels better. Uh, also, our supporting county staff, we have Buffy Giddens as Deputy County Attorney, our Assistant County Attorney, Mr. John Hauser. Uh, from the Department of Public Works, we have Donnie Mills. Uh, from St. Mary's Metropolitan Commission, we have Christy Hollander, though I don't see her, and Anna Wells. Um, we have Mr. Alec Young from the Patuxent River NAS Community Planning Liaison's Office. Uh, Casey Gidry from the Department of Economic Development. And Amy Carter is our video media producer this evening. Did everybody, excuse me, did everybody have a chance to review the January 23rd minutes? Yes. Okay. Is there any addition, additions or deletions? If not, I'll accept a motion. Make a motion it. that we approve the minutes of the January 23rd, 23 Planning Commission meeting. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Ms. Summers. Okay, um, we'll do roll call vote, Ms. Robert. Approve. Yeah, aye. Aye. I'm sorry. Ms. Summers? Aye. Mr. Brown? Did you say me? Yes. Brown? Sir. Yes. Mr. Evans? Aye. 
Mr. Fazekas? Aye. Mr. Van Kirk? Aye. Also vote aye. Okay, thank you. Moving right along, our first case of, the, in, of this evening. Um, I'm going to swear everybody in. If you think you're going to be giving us any statements this evening, we'll go ahead and swear everybody in at, at the same time. But I will ask you when you come up to the microphone during that, that period of the meeting, uh, if you've been sworn in. If you haven't, I'll, I'll re-swear you in. And if you didn't get on the sheet, I'll make sure that you get up here. Okay, all persons testifying this evening, if you stand now, we'll get you sworn in. Okay. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, Courtney, take it away. Good evening, um, Chair, Vice Chair, and Planning Commissioners. Um, agenda item one is a concept site plan, CSP 22-0234 for the Golden Beach development. The concept site plan seeks approval of a 20,599 square foot supermarket, 30,000 square feet of buildings for the relocated flea market and fairgrounds use, a 5,200 square foot fast food with a drive-through, and 2,675 square feet of retail space, pad sites, and a 2,437 square foot restaurant pad site. The site is located at 29890 and 29990 and 29940 Three Knots Road in Charlotte Hall. The land use is mixed use, moderate intensity and the zoning is Town Center Mixed Use, TMX. The regulations for the Town Center Mixed Use District provide opportunities for residential and commercial development within town centers consistent with the comprehensive plan. Standards are intended to create an urban character and make the core area safe, pedestrian friendly, and visually attractive. Per the comprehensive plan, town centers are secondary growth centers uh, located in Charlotte Hall, Newmarket, Mechanicsville, Hollywood, and Piney Point. They are to be urban in pattern and form, designed for moderately intense residential, commercial, and industrial development, supported by the provision of community facilities and services. Um, so use type 50 is for fairgrounds and flea markets. They are establishments engaged in maintaining building or open area in which buildings, parking facilities, and open areas rented or otherwise provided for temporary uses, including public or private shows or events, or for use by various unrelated individuals to sell articles that are either homemade, homegrown, handcrafted, old, obsolete, or antique, and may include selling of goods at retail by businesses or individuals that are generally engaged in retail trade of new or secondhand reclaimed or salvaged goods. Use type 73 for a restaurant is an establishment serving unpackaged food and beverages in a ready to consume state primarily to persons seated at counters or tables within the building. It may include outside dining and sale of food prepared on site and beverages for consumption off the premises where alcoholic beverages are sold in conjunction with the sale of food for consumption on the premises and the sale of said beverages comprises less than 50% of the gross receipts. Use type number 74, which is for restaurant fast food. <coughs> Excuse me, it's an establishment that offers quick eat-in or takeout food service, which is accomplished through a limited menu of items already prepared and held for service or prepared, fried, grilled quickly, or heated in a device such as a microwave oven. Orders are not generally taken at the customer's table. Food is not served at the same table or counter where the food is consumed, and the food is generally served in disposable wrapping in containers. Use type number 76 is for retail sales, which is an establishment engaged in low volume retail sales of goods and merchandise, not specifically listed under another use classification. 
included but not limited to specialty stores engaged in the retail sale of antiques, appliances, art, art supplies and services, new automotive parts and accessories, excluding service and installation, bicycles, cameras, carpeting and floor coverings, coins, electronic <coughs> equipment, handcrafted items, hardware, hobby materials, um, Jewelry, kitchen utensils, medical supplies, office supplies, paint and wallpaper, photographic supplies, records, sporting goods, toy stores, pawn shops, grocers, liquor stores, or delicatessens. Um, for drive-through services is a secondary use, number 115, which is a facility for providing services to persons remaining in automobiles. The um, public notice for the Planning Commission public hearing was published in the Southern Maryland News on January 27th and February 3rd, 2023. Um, the property has been posted in accordance with the CZO requirement, section 21.3.3. Certified mail receipts have been received and have been entered into the record of this public hearing as Exhibit 1. The agenda was posted on the website on February 1st. The concept site plan was distributed for review by the TEC agencies on September 21st, 2022. The use of fairgrounds and flea markets, um, restaurant, retail sales general, and drive through services are permitted uses in the town center mixed use zoning district. And the use of restaurant uh, fast food is permitted as a limited use in the TMX zoning district. For all non-residential and multifamily residential projects that require major site plan approval, a concept site plan shall first be approved by the Planning Commission before the major site plan may be processed for approval by the Planning Director. This is a public hearing which enables all who wish to provide information to the Planning Commission. In order to approve the concept site plan, the Planning Commission shall make the findings that the proposed development is uh, consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable functional plans may be served by adequate public facilities as required by section 70.2.2, will promote the health, safety, and welfare of the general public, will adequate, adequately develop recreation and other community amenities are provided in accordance with the comprehensive plan and the comprehensive zoning ordinance and is consistent with chapter 62 design objectives. Um, this concludes the staff report and is entered into the record of this public hearing as Exhibit 2. Uh, Nelson Aracho with Bay Engineering is here representing the applicant, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have for me at this time. Does so anybody have any questions of staff? Mr. Van Kirk? Courtney, um, when you talked about the actions requested of all the supermarket, uh, mm -hmm. restaurant, uh, pad sites. Yes. Is this hearing just to approve the pad sites and not specifically? I mean, if this is approved right. and they get a pad site for retail space, there was a lot of different things in the retail space. You know, a coin shop would have a whole lot less people going in and out than a liquor store, which was on there also. Right. Um, would so they have to come back with a concept? Um, no, they would not have to come back for the concept site plan for the retail spaces or for the restaurant. Um, I'm not sure if they have any um, spaces leased at this time. Maybe the applicant can, can address that. Um, but we do have the architectural renderings for the um, retail building. But we don't know what it is yet. Correct. Like say. So was that included in the traffic? I really didn't pay a lot of attention to. Was that included in the traffic counts? The proposed retail space and the restaurant, the pads? Um, I will we let the that. traffic okay. engineer answer that, but okay. I, I would assume so. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else for staff? Okay. Mr. Orocho. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Sue Greer of the Law Offices of Sue A. Greer on behalf of the applicant, Golden Beach Properties. Uh, with me here tonight is Nelson Orocho of Bay Engineering, Jackie Chandler of Traffic Concepts, and Justin Rosamore of Golden Beach Properties, LLC. 
I am pleased to be here with you tonight to present this redevelopment project to the Planning Commission. It is, I know we have some public comment and we're always anxious to hear from the public. In this case, um, Mr. Rosemore has been working and listening to the community and we have in fact made changes to our plans throughout the process based on some of the feedback that we have received. Um, what is exciting about this project is it's really, you know, a combination of the push between old and new. The, the new is that the project is doing what your comprehensive plan asks it to do. It's taking commercial redevelopment in an area that your comprehensive plan has designated for redevelopment and for growth, and it's doing it on an existing parcel because that's also what your comprehensive plan says. We want development at this area, and we want you to develop on existing parcels and redevelop those for infill development. I am going to because, but the old is, is that one of the comments that we've heard, frankly, throughout the process of developing this project relate to the farmer's market or the market that's there. And so what this project does, while it allows the redevelopment of the parcel, by relocating and reconfiguring that, it allows the farmer's market to maintain a presence on the property. So that's the old, bringing it together to bring a better product to the Charlotte Hall in St. Mary's County community. Now I know there are a number of speakers, so I think you probably want to get to it. Um, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Nelson Orocho of Bay Engineering, followed by Jackie Chandler of Traffic Concepts. Mr. Rosamore will be here to answer any questions you have. And then after the public um, comment, we would of course like the opportunity to sum up. So with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Orocho. Good evening, Chair and Board Members. My name is Nelson Orocho. I'm with Bay Engineering. I'm a project manager with the firm. And uh, so, you're going to help me along here? Yep. Uh, Just tell me when. The, the second slide is the overall site plan of uh, the site uh, to the far right, which is the uh, to the east, and and uh, the northeast is where the farmers market will be relocated to, top right of the of that sheet, mm -hmm. to the uh, west, which is adjoining um, a three notch road, Route Five, is the uh, Chick Fil A pad site to right there. Uh, just south of that is the retail building. And then to the east of that is the grocery store uh, site. Uh, there is a uh, configuration wise, there, let me do this, apologize. Uh, configuration wise, there is a, uh, a, um, a center private drive or a, um, a kind of a spine road that goes north south between the Chick fil A and the uh, the grocery store and goes down to the retail pad and allows for. Um, for circulation, there is a, a sidewalk that runs along that uh, spine or central drive uh, to the east side, uh, which connects all three pad sites internally. The, um, the existing site, if we can go, thank you, perfect. If you see there on the existing site, we have, uh, we call it the loop road. It's, it's um, I think, formerly known as uh, uh, MDSHA 855A. It's a, it's the access road that runs parallel to uh, Three Notch Route Five, and it it comes into Traveled uh, Lane. Uh, that road uh, is proposed, and you can see it there. It's it's colored. It's hard to see, but if you could flip back, please, to the uh, the site plan to the first second, uh, you can see there's a cul-de-sac bulb there up towards Travel Lane. So that, that will be terminated. The intent is that will be terminated. People would come traveling north, get onto the access, the old the loop road. Then they would come into the, initially either to the, to the south, to the retail pad site. Then to the north, they would come into the Chick-fil-A site. But then the road is terminated with the cul-de-sac that you can see there. Uh, if you move your, the cursor to the, the arrow to the, the west or left, the, right there is where the cul-de-sac is. So people will, coming up the north, traveling, would come to a, an island, uh, a concrete island that, that would 
cause them to turn into the site and that, that intersection there would have a light. So it'd be a full movement and Jackie will speak more about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, um, uh, the site currently is uh, developed its buildings and uh, a lot of gravel stone for parking. And if you go to the color, please, you could see that with the buildings there and the structures that are there, excuse me, the structures that are there um, that are existing and then everything you see in a light yellow uh, tan tint, that is all stone impervious area. So um, that's sort of the backdrop as far as existing, some of the physical features that are changing there. Um, probably if we can go to the color rendering, it probably, uh, oh, these are slides, um, just to talk through the slides. We have a, just a view, a street view of the farmer's market. Um, there's two of those that you can see, one's to the south, one's for, this one's a little more to the north with the structures there. Um, and then we have the detail uh, layout of what's currently proposed for the uh, farmer market area. Um, then the next, this is the information as far as site. And again, because the site is impervious, the stormwater management is done through redevelopment for environmental site design to the maximum extent practicable, practicable, excuse me. And so, um, this has been met on site uh, because of the redevelopment opportunity that's there. There's no stormwater management existing at all. So we're going from zero to, I think, uh, over 15,000 cubic feet of storage of ESD for the site. If you can go to. Um, this is the uh, zoom in for the Chick fil A site. Uh, the Chick fil A site. Um, uh, entrance there, again, is off Loop Road. There are, it's showing the two lanes with cars stacked. Uh, there is an additional option for a third lane to, for more vehicles. Um, the uh, parking uh, is to the north of the building. And uh, we have um, uh, ample parking for the site. Hmm. Next slide. And that's just the background information for, with regard to the site. We can go to the next slide. This is the, um, the grocery store. Um, it's front, or the front of the store is obviously to the west. Uh, the loading area for trucks and delivery is to the east or to the right. And, uh, and then entry for, um, for the site would be through the again, through the spine or that central drive road to get patrons into the site uh, for grocery shopping. Basic background information, again. And then this is the retail site, uh, which again is just, as was mentioned by the board, uh, it's, it's retail. There's, uh, Justin Rosemore can speak more specifically about if he has some leases there, um, the site is parked amply for the for general retail um, at, at the at the moment, and um, and that's what we have it shown as. Um, again, uh, stormwater management is provided on all sites. Okay, and then the and then uh, this is really um, what I wanted to get to because <clears throat> this really shows. A big difference, I think, with respect to what the site is currently and what it's it's going to be. Um, you can see that we provided the uh, the required buffer, six, 65 feet from the right of way to the uh, pavement, and there will be a landscaping along the entire frontage there. Um, internally, uh, the landscaping, uh, both along Travel Lane and even uh, around the Chick-fil-A and even between those and the, um, the retail site. So it's, it's, as far as green, it's much improved. Um, with the green that's just lawn, trees, landscaping, plus the store mortar management area that's provided. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's quite much, much better from that standpoint. Um, and then, 
this is showing the, uh, the potential there for the, for the uh, farmer's market relocation and uh, shows some configurations and what's, what's there. And Justin can speak some too about what he sees for this in, in the future if there's any questions about that. But this is what we have as far as taking the structures that were existing, existing and then moving them to this new location. Um, I guess I'll stop and leave it for questions from the board. Mr. Uh, Orocho? Orocho, yeah, yeah. So I got a couple questions. The first, I, I can't put my head around it. So we have the uh, local parallel access road. And right now, it, the people can turn onto what's listed as traveled lane. Travel lane, yes, and sir. We're, we're terminating that, obviously, because we don't want the, uh, the various traffic um, um, uh, complex. Yeah, exactly. So you put a, a, a cir traffic circle, what would you call a, a cul de sac there? Cul de sac, yes. So, what would be the purpose? I, I, I'm just really confused about the, the purpose of the cul-de-sac. If somebody is getting off onto the access road, they obviously want to go to run the businesses. So I don't see why the access road wouldn't just stop at the Chick-fil-A driveway. Could you explain that to me? We showed it purely for emergency vehicles or turnaround area at the end. If somebody, the issue is if somebody comes in and they want to come back down to one of the places they pass, like the retail place. They can turn around and come. It's still two-way, right? It's not a one-way. So they can get to the cul-de-sac and turn around and come come back down to at least the shops there if they have to. Could, but, you, could you use the pointer and so that everybody can see what you're talking about in the discussion as you're elaborating? So is that something that the county's requiring? So the for the emergency vehicles. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm cool. No, it's just a it was just an internal thing just to, to allow for 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 movement. The the how you want to say uh, the nuance is that uh, th that road is state highway owned. Uh, so we would negotiate that with state highways. It's not a county, right? It's a state highway right away. Um, so they've they're allowing us to do this. This has been pr proposed to them, and they're they're okay with it. Um, and if the county or the board would have some other s suggestions, we would have to go back to SHA and say, look, you know, maybe the cul-de-sac bulb is lessened or the impervious area is reduced. But that would be something that we'd have to go back to SHA, and I can't speak for them. Um, this is what's been shown. So if this needs to differ or be revised, uh, that's something that we would have to go back to them. Okay, if that's that, a That was the one part I didn't I catch, and it's actually SHA who owns yeah. the property, so. Yeah. The, the second question uh, pertains to the lanes on the Chick-fil-A. Have you ever gone to the Chick-fil-A or driven past the one in front of the uh, giant supermarket in California? And have you ever seen how the <laughs> traffic goes out into the, the uh, the uh, access road on the property there, and uh, you know, as a as a customer at Giant, it's hard for me to get out because cars are queuing 10, 12 sometimes if it's you know close to lunch or dinner time onto that pro off the Chick Fil A property. So, so what what is what is being done in this design to okay. address? Because most Chick Fil A's seem to have this. Uh, yeah. Popularity yeah. problem. Yes, that's a good a good question. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. I guess. Yeah, it's good for good for Chick Fil A. Um, so there is a uh, a queuing analysis that's in the end of your package that was provided, and in that analysis they took the one that's in, in Leonard right, and they looked at that, and that was maxed at 22 vehicles for what they were doing there. Um, this has a potential of 50 vehicles, so okay. they have considered uh, that issue okay. and they've provided for that, um, that condition uh, as far as the, um, the, the stacking and the queuing for vehicles and people are there. So, um, okay, and then just to follow up on that, the, so I'm a little confused just about the way the drawing's done because it comes in and it shows the two uh, lanes and the optional third lane as you, you mentioned. Correct. But then as you turn around the uh, far corner of the building, that lane just kind of disappears into the landscape. 
So could you explain that to me? The, at, at the Chick-fil-A's, right, when the, the greeters or the people the, the, are coming out and, uh, and um, navigating those, uh, they, oh, they taper down, you know, and a lot of the two, okay. they, yeah, they, and, and they, I don't know how they do it. It's not magic, but they, they, they talk to each other. Um, you know, they'll say, you're behind the, uh, the, okay. the Chevy pickup truck, and you're behind the, the Ford vehicle. That's, or, that's a standard practice. It's, just, it's standard practice, and they're, they're, they're literally uh, um, guiding you to make sure that you're, in the, you're the proper person to pay you know, the right bill uh, right, and right. pick up the right stuff. So. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have for you right now. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have anything at this point? I do. Okay. So just to piggyback off of Mr. Fazekas's question, I'm, I'm just looking for a little bit more additional clarification. So in the Chick-fil-A drive-through, if you have backup, <coughs> would the backup potentially be on the loop road? No, no. The, the, they would... Um, they would navigate the people to stay in the parking area. So you see that parking aisle to the uh, to the north. If you move your cursor to the left, yeah, right. So so they would they would basically have the people, if they needed to, coming through the parking, stacking, and not try not to stack or queue out into the into the roadway. So they would be internal. They would. They would do that, but there, again, there's 50. It's 50 vehicles. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I've seen one with. I would say I'm, I've been the one that has 50 vehicles, but that's quite a few vehicles that they're allowing for, uh, as far as a condition there. So. But people could actually pull into the Chick-fil-A from the Loop Road, correct? Or no? Oh yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So if they're pulling in from the Loop Road and they make that immediate right into the fast food lane, yes, there is the potential that the loop road could get congested. So they would have, they still would have someone directing. So if they were in a busy time, I don't know, whatever that busy time is, it seems like they're always busy. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I'll, I won't pick a time. But when they are busy uh, and they need to, they will have someone to basically tell the people to, to continue through and they will, they will direct the people to basically stack and get them out of that condition. That is my understanding. Because it it's really doesn't done. work that way in California. It's not done anywhere in California. Yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. nightmare. And if you're going to weave these people through the parking lot, that's even more of a hazard, I would think. I would just think other people would get in front of me. I'm now ready to yeah, go exactly. in line. Now I'm going to go loop around, and eight of the car is going to jump in front of me. That's, so I think yeah. the, human, the human aspect of that is going to be hard to, uh, to fight uh, as, as in terms of traffic control. I don't know how you would handle that. Yeah, it seems like that driveway there is just lending entrance. the businesses uh, patrons to be queuing on a public access road. So, so I think that's why Chick-fil-A has added this mm. option for the third lane, which you don't typically see. Right. And if you see that they've doubled their ability, that typically they make provisions. I think, what did you say, Mr. Orocho? It's tw 22 with the 22. study shown. Yeah. And this is how many? Uh, this would uh, stack 50 with the third lane. So it's more than double. So it uh, sounds to uh, me like they're responding to the fact that they know that they are popular and that this is an issue and they're trying to make provisions for it at this location. And I, and I didn't clarify that it's 38 with the two lanes. So it's 20, So it's 22. Without the third lane, it's 38. Add the third lane, it gets to 50. So 22 is what the study is showing that seems like what they would need. They said, okay, we're going to show 38 here. Uh, and they have the provision for the third lane, which would get them to 50. So that's why, you know, they're in their minds and their research and what they do as far as that they feel that. And obviously, Chick-fil-A is not interested in causing conflicts, right? And, you know, it doesn't help them if they, it wouldn't help them, so. I, I, think, yeah. I think that the, the dialogue has to change from the option of a third lane to that that's going to have the third lane just because we already have problems with this chain of business in the county. And uh, the fact that in that case, it's a private road on the development. And this is, as you mentioned, is a state public access road. Um, you know, just thinking about emergency services and such, I think that would really, really um, 
you know, cause some safety concerns. So I definitely think that instead of just as an option, I think that should definitely be part of the proposed plan. That would just make me feel a little more comfortable. Following on that line, can I ask the question? Yes, sir. The, uh, you compare it to what I call the, the terribly planned Chick-fil-A, meaning the one in California, because it's been an add-on as we have done it over the years. As it relates to the Waldorf, did you ever go up and compare it to what the Waldorf turn is, where they have the circle arrangement like this? What it what what were their numbers, or do you even did you even do that? Um, the uh, the study for the queuing was provided by uh, by Chick Fil A and their uh, their consultants, so I don't have that information. So they only provided you data related to the California one. That's correct, sir. Even though even though it's a different county, there is a design similar to this up the road in Walmart in that area of Waldorf. So be aware of that. Thank you, sir. Is uh, my understanding that the Laurel Chick-fil-A provided information as well? Yes, they did. They, yeah, they used, they took the Laurel and then used that as a base, then did the analysis of the, um, the one in, in the county and then and then extrapolated what they needed there and then and then they took that and said all right th these are similar stores or, or and so on and so let me ask a little oh i'm sorry go ahead Pat. back i mean same issue yes ma'am speak to the microphone there is there any way that 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 you can enter that chick-fil-a without any con risk to back up to the Ongoing traffic on either side of, on either road. Is there any other configuration that would not that would mitigate the risk of a backup if there's greater than? I mean, I'm not. I even think with 50, there's always that. I mean, the risk is still there that people. I mean, you're going to have a backup. Well, I think. Somebody could oh. fall asleep and hold up the whole thing. I mean, <laughs> Talking about me. Yeah, <laughs> waiting for your food. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think the the logistics, right, and yeah. when they do these, they have these, I, I, I'll say young people because I'm, I'm an old man, so they're much younger, but they, they, they'll come out and they usually are directing people, again, with the lanes and stuff, and also they, they uh, you can manage the vehicles uh, with respect to directing them when they're closer versus farther away. So if, if they're coming in, if they have someone stationed at the entrance and they know that they've queued, let's say the examples, they've queued 50 people, right? And they, they know that and they're busy period. They can direct those people immediately as they come in and get them out of there so they don't have a stacking and get them out. Uh, the, the ability for them to then Negotiate the people and get them away from there is is it, would it be to say a better scenario than having them conf being conflicted right there or trying to s put additional stacking, get them out in a way and stack them uh, uh, you know around. It it seems logical, but I just well my question really was: Is there any way, any other configuration that could mitigate that risk? We haven't evaluated that. <clears throat> I also noticed um, two things. Um, the cul-de-sac you said that you have there, that's an unmarked uh, lane right now. And if you have people, I'll say, that go by the Chick-fil-A entrance and go down to that cul-de-sac and then circle back around, I presume that they went by for one or two reasons. They didn't know where they were at, which they should know where they're at if they live around there. Or two, they couldn't get in the entryway to Chick-fil-A. So then they're going all the way back down, heading south in that lane and popping back out onto 235 or Route 5. Um, yeah. That could be um, hazardous in itself because even though that is a, count, a state owned, it's, it's kind of tight right in there. Uh, it would have to be relined and all that type of uh, work to be done on that part of the project. And also where you turn off of yeah. Route 5 and go on, I believe that's called Traveler Lane, you have an entry into Chick-fil-A right there at the head. Um, 
Now you were saying if things get bad on that side entrance, you're gonna direct traffic to that parking lot. Well, suppose you have people pulling into that parking lot because they can't get into that line and you have people entering off of that lane that are coming in there. They're, they're slowing down from a, from a 50 degree mile an hour speed coming into that lane. So they're gonna be, I won't say hot, but they're gonna be coming in at a, at a, at a, a faster rate of speed when they come in there because they're hungry and they wanna get into Chick-fil-A as quick as they can. Um, I have the feeling that you're gonna have a problem right there having that entrance so close to 235. You have an entrance that's on the new um, lane that's right there, the access lane. Um, if it would be diverted to that so you could be, make that a bigger entrance on the side so that they could get in there uh, alleviating the, the problem that if, uh, as I said, if you've got people coming, turning into that north end of that lot, you already have, the queue is full, they're putting them in the parking lot. It's gonna be a, a cluster right in there, I think. Um, I can let somebody else address that or you can address that, but that's just something that, that I'm thinking about. You got a lot of things coming right into that one little spot all at one time, and they're not gonna be patient with it. You know. Howard, I didn't even see that until you mentioned it, but uh, if I'm going north on five, mm -hmm. and uh, I say, oh, Chick-fil-A, and I, I make that really quick turn, I am coming hot around that current corner, yeah. and if there's cars queuing out onto Traveler Lane, yeah. You know, that's just a recipe for a bad accident. No, I know it's a 50, 50 car stack up, but I think they've practically had 50 cars in California. Of course, it's only two lanes going into the California store, so that's that's strike one against them. Your, your, your three lane um, path around there w will help. That three lane path leads into two, if I'm not mistaken, when it comes time for pickup. Um, what it kind of shows on on this map here, so um, you got a lot a lot of stuff going on that little bit a lot. Yeah, I had a follow up, some comments to that. <clears throat> How many spots do they have for ordering? One lane, two lanes, three lanes? They're they're ordering in three. What three the lanes. setup is that they would be able to order in three lanes. So they can order they, in three, and then it narrows down to two <laughs> when they pick up. Coming down to two, yes, sir. Okay. So from <clears throat> I can't read it anymore. I had looked at it on the on the plan before, but what's the total distance of the two, not counting the third, space wise? I know you said for fifty cars that would require like a, like a thousand feet. Doesn't doesn't queuing take in like twenty four feet or twenty feet a car or? On average, oh, apologies. Just want to know how long them two lanes are, and then the third one is not as long because they got to merge into right into the, the third, other lane. The third one, it, the third lane is about 14 vehicles uh, as far as stacking for the third one. So, um, if you give me a second, I'll sure. Because I, I read the report from Chick-fil-A, and like I said, I can't, I couldn't, somebody else mentioned, I can't for the life of me see why they would exclude using Waldorf, which is a highly populated area. And I'm not saying Laurel's not populated, and I, but it said there's an average of 12 to 22 vehicles at Chick-fil-A in California. I mean, that's true some of the time, but I tell you, most of the time I pass right by there and won't even pull into the, into the place from 10.30 till seven o'clock at night. You park in the Walmart parking lot. We have to park in Target. I see many person park in Target. And walk, and walk park over in the, the road. And walk across. Because you can't even get into the lane if you wanted to eat there. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that this is not going to create some of the, and that stuff about having somebody out there directing traffic. I've, 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 I've seen it down there at Chick-fil-A, up at the building, they're telling people to get in two lanes and sometimes somebody would be taking an order, but they're never out there by the road. Never. And I can't blame them. They could kill them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, have um, a chance. So. Well, also the, the, the California Chick-fil-A, the queuing is ending up on the property, mm -hmm. not where people are going maybe 25 miles an hour, not 55 miles an hour on Route 5. 
And I think I think that. Well, they're not going to queue on Route Five. <coughs> they're going to queue on the Loop Road, right? Well, they're going to they're going to they're going to they're going to turn from if they're going northbound. They're going to be turning, and then yeah, but that that that. Oh yeah, up there. You're yeah, talking right about the, up right there. Yeah, but, yeah, with the mouses. The only problem that's going to cause is where cars hops. That north entrance off of Travel Lane. And then the one off a of loop road, you're going to have people waiting in loop road and people coming in the north from travel lane. And blocking. You'll have an all out war tr trying to say, well, I was next to get into the. And that'll <laughs> block lane. the park, all that parking. Yeah, wanted. it's a. I don't, I don't know about that specific design. Go ahead. Go ahead, location. So, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, apologize. So, distance, so from the, the order window, right, where all three lanes would okay. be, that's middle of the building, just to the south. It, from that point, coming around the outer lane, the third lane. Going it, back toward travel lane. Yeah, yeah, so it's two, the inner lane is obviously tighter, so it's less distance, about 210 feet. The outer lane is about 250 feet, 240. So those are the lengths there. The middle one's probably the average, 225, you know. So 246, 500 feet of lane width, or lane length there, approximately. But... Okay, if you got 500 feet of, of lane, how do we get 50 cars out of that? I, I'm pretty sure I've seen a lot of reports of queuing on roads. There's, I mean, a car is no shorter in the parking lot than it is on the road. <laughs> so it, 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 I don't see how it's 50 cars. Well, the, the, the cars are also counted coming through to the pickup window. So there's the additional ones from, the, from that point to the pickup window. So all the way around. Yes, but, yes, sir. But they're going to be having to stop at 200 feet instead of all the way around at the pickup window. So there's going to be some kind of a slight delay sometimes. To order. Just to order because, you know, driving windows and not just picking on Chick-fil-A. A lot of times the food isn't ready, so you got to sit at the window, you yeah. know, for a minute or two, which is a long time when you've got cars. There's, a, there's approximately 40 to 42 vehicles from the order window to the end that are that are that are there. So there's qu still quite a bit of stacking from from just the windows, the order windows to the end. So there's approximately 40 vehicles. Uh, yeah. I don't see that, but that's Mr. Evans. You have some? Yeah, I, yeah. I just California is California because there's no place to go. I mean, they're they're in a development, and I don't think Chick Fil A in the time when it was constructed really considered how busy it was going to be, and they really have between a rock and a hard spot. But I've noticed since, I guess, the last couple of years with, with more people using drive-ins, what I've noticed is that the, when, they, when they mitigate for traffic, they don't do it as traffic moves into the, into the parcel. They mitigate it as it comes out. And what happens is that those folks that, that Joe was talking about with regard to making the order and moving forward, if those orders aren't complete, they're using runners, and what they do is that they get the folks to clear the lanes beyond the pickup lane, and they have them park in designated areas, and it says um, drive-in parking, and that's, and that's what it's used for. So, moving, so you would have, moving in, um, the idea of having somebody, I'm sorry, the other way, make a left, off of, off of the loop road, moving into the, to, into, the, into the loop to make an order, so to have somebody out there would be crazy. I mean, that would just be not, not a good thing for anybody. But if you, well, as long as you can keep the lanes fairly clear by moving the traffic through and having the traffic come out the other end, right, exactly. And if those orders weren't complete, they would simply go across and park. And then what's, what most places are using now, Chick-fil-A and other places is doing it. I see um, McDonald's is doing it. Uh, you'll see more and more of these these areas where they can't. They, I guess they get backed up, or it's a large order, or whatever. And so the way to mitigate that is to keep people moving through those lanes at the at the at the exit, not trying to mitigate it at the at the entrance. Right. And I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but um, having an, an, an putting putting some uh, so a, a, an opportunity for people to park for that short amount of time that they're going to have to wait for their orders for these runners to come out. Um, and not that I want to be a runner or anybody else, but that's the only way that this is going to work. And it's the only way it's going to work probably in California is to, is to have runners. And I don't know where they're going to park them. Maybe they would. It's not feasible to park them across the road at Target because you've got to cross, you're going to cross the road. 
it, it almost has to be on that on that side of uh, the road. And I haven't been by there lately, and I haven't been to Laurel either. There's, so. there's a lot of, uh, there's a few uh, Chick-fil-A stores that yeah. do that. Uh, there, um, there's one in Annapolis. It's yeah, very busy in Edgewater. They do that. There's the one, the newest one in Calvert. Right. They do the same thing. They have, uh, I think, the front row and maybe one row in. They cone it off uh, so that people can just, and they direct people to wait there as they bring their orders this out. Is, this is not new. Um, there's a new redevelopment in uh, Patuxent. Was it is the old San Sushi? Mm -hmm. They just built... Slim Chickens. Slim Chickens has the same issue. They have people that are all out, all the way around the corner, blocking access to a lot of the, the other uh, restaurants there. And they're using cones and all kinds of stuff. It's just, you know, this isn't built yet. So the time to fix this or do something with it is now. You know, and I'm just saying that the, m mitigating people coming in is not the way to do it. Mitigating getting people out of those lanes and across into the in some sort of a, a lane or a parking area for those people that have placed their orders and they're waiting is a much much better idea. But it comes down to really putting ten pounds of mud in a five pound sack. So, Chairman, I I've got a questions as it relates really it looks like everything is designed around shall we say the drive-through traffic and I don't see if people are either at at Aldi's or they're over there at the other retail areas how do they access going over to Chick-fil-a is there any where are the walkways is there any sidewalks anything to get people over there and and please show by pointer how they do that from either of those two locations. Yeah. So there's a, a sidewalk that goes from the south, if you, on the south, right on the east side of the road, or east side of that central, uh, right, there's a sidewalk that continues all the way up through, goes all the way up, keeps going, and keeps going all the way to the north, and ends right at that entrance point. And then there is a crosswalk that is right across the the concrete access access area for the uh, for the Chick Fil A. And then there is another crosswalk down to the south for the retail uh, area for those to come from that area to pick up to that sidewalk and then be able to get excuse me to be able to get to and travel uh, between the three pad sites. But isn't your crosswalk that goes from Aldi to Chick Fil A? comes right out into the, I'll say the, um, where they're leaving, they've picked up their order already. Isn't that kind of dangerous to have it right there? Uh, I mean, I've got my order of chicken. I'm getting, getting, I'm hitting the road, buddy. So, you know, if somebody's walking across there, that could, that could really be a problem there. Yeah. Plus then, then you're also telling me that there's going to be people parking over at Aldi's going, walking over to Chick-fil-A to get a sandwich. You know, hell, I'm not going to mess with that lot. I'm going to park next door at the Aldi store and walk over and get a chicken sandwich if I'm if I'm hearing right what you just said. So uh, that's going to cause a problem both for uh, Aldi, uh, reducing their number of, of uh, parking spots, and um, it's going to um, uh, have a little problem there coming across that, that crosswalk. Into the into a lot that's uh, where all the the three lanes of traffic have gone down to two. They're getting an order and they're 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 pulling out of there hard and fast. So I see that as a problem. We, we can uh, we can evaluate that with the um, the, the Chick Fil A uh, people as far as the location of that crosswalk and and uh, I mean, what options we have. It almost looks to me like it would have been better to have Aldi close to Route 5, exactly. have the Chick-fil-A on the inside, and uh, one that would give you, when people turn on to the, um, what's the lane at the top? I can't think of what, what the travel, travel, travel lane. lane. Um, they would give them more distance to come down to whip in. I think people are going to whip in the Chick-fil-A harder than they're going to whip in the Aldi's. <laughs> um, I mean, I've seen Al our Aldi's down here in the county, and it, it's, it stays pretty pretty busy, mm -hmm. but um, it's not quite out of control like the Chick-fil-A is going to be. That's just my observation. Excellent. And is the 
back to what we were talking about. Uh, the buffers you're showing there, it's, it's not a hedge like you have down in California. Is it just trees and a few plants you dodge so that if you walk across, otherwise, do you have a path that goes across there? Yeah, there's a, there will be a concrete path, uh, concrete walk there. Yes, Because, I mean, you know, I'm one of those people that parks in the Target parking lot. I can go through the hedge, place my order, get it, and come back and beat the cars that were ahead of me. So, I mean, it's people are going to look for the least amount of time. So the, the issues of people parking in Aldi's or down in the other retail area is going to be possibly present itself. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Is this... Has this been looked at, different configurations of this plan been developed or looked at, or was this like the first run and this is what we came up with? Because I really feel like there, and obviously I'm not an expert, but it would seem to me that there would be a different configuration that might be safer than this plan that we have in front of us right now. The site layout, as far as configuration within the Chick Fil A, and that uh, that's provided by by the uh, by the restaurant by Chick Fil A, as far as what they would prefer uh, as to layout and their store size and the parking, and uh, and then uh, similar to Aldi, you know they they would have they would present each one what they would want based on how it's sort of laying out. I mean, uh, the, the retail to the south is more driven by the develop by Justin Rosemore as far as saying, I'm, I'm going to develop this and have a layout there. And um, not, it's not driven, let's say, by either one in the sense of what their outside uh, direction and uh, and uh, requirements. So, and, and they have the requirements. I'm sorry. Um, they have the requirements as far as circulation and movements for vehicles and and drop offs and delivery. So they have a lot of things that they want to meet, because you know some of this stuff too is truck, you know, getting vehicles. And and sometimes you know it's like the people. But then you, if you put the trucks in conflict with the uh, with the people, then there's an issue there. Like for Aldi, you know, they're they're load they load to the back, so they want the trucks going to the back, coming in back up again, and getting out the road, and then getting out of there. So there's there are things that are thought through, that are considered, that uh, are tr try to make it mesh together the best they can. So we didn't we don't try to throw these things. You know, we're not throwing darts on on, on a dartboard. We try not to do that. So. Let me ask you. Yes, quick. Sir. Let me ask you a quick question, because I was thinking the same thing, but I wasn't thinking of configuration of the parking lots and stuff like that. I was thinking of, was any consideration giving to Aldi being by the road and Chick-fil-A being... Yeah, that's in, what I was saying. In, that's what I thought. Exactly. Right. Internal, I'm, I'm just saying, was that a, any concern, or does Chick-fil-A, like a lot of stores, require road front or want road front? Or? That's, that's something that... Is beyond. We can uh, ask the developer. Developer would, would that be when best we get to. to. Okay, I just was was curious because plenty of concerns. Like I think Mr. Thompson, Mr. Vizika said, cars coming off of five going north, turning on the travel lane, and coming right into into the Chick Fil A, which could cause some queuing, which would stop the cars that's coming southbound five into turning into travel lane. Mm -hmm. If you either didn't have that northern entrance into Chick-fil-A or had them using the private access lane in between Aldi and Chick-fil-A, it looks to me like it would cause, it would cause less, less of a problem also. It, is that, does private lane also have an in-out for, for Chick-fil-A right there? Yeah. Hard to tell. Yeah, right there where the cursor. Where okay, you see so where that is an also an in out yes, also sir. of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Aldi, Aldi has two. They have one to the north where the cursor is, and then they have the one to the south. So they have two points. Uh, the um, the Chick fil A has a, a two way coming from, uh, again, from the. SHA uh, Loop Road, and then they have the internal connection, and then they have the, the entrance to the north that comes in, coming in, and then the um, the retail has uh, 
uh, three access points, two south, and one in front and in back, and then one to the, just the north of it. There. So is the travel lane entrance into Chick-fil-A a right turn in only, or can they go out that way also? It's just a right in, sir. So they can't leave that way? Correct. Okay. Yes. I hope not. Well, that's what I was, I was <laughs> hoping that that would mitigate a little bit on the problem. And the Audi also has another entrance off travel lane, don't they? They have one right there where the arrow is at Yeah, now. that's what I was explaining where the truck most likely, you know, vehicles are coming in to do the loading on the rear of the uh, store there, sir. Where and when does the, uh, um, Chick Fil A get their deliveries? I, I, I'm sorry, I do not know that. Okay, because <laughs> oh, <laughs> we <they, laughs> worry about all this queuing and stuff. I, I can't, <laughs> I can't imagine if they if a truck showed up late and uh, the, the, the <laughs> drive-through was open. <laughs> In the so I don't see any loading zone on the on the design. In the retail area, where do you propose the? Entrances to those things to be on the west, north, or east. I think if you we look at the um, the architectural elevations, it'll show it that the there's the entrances are to the west, or that the main. They're front, all along the west. Front, the storefront all along that west side. Okay, yes, I just wanted to make sure. But um, so there's the uh, thank you. So in essence, the parking on the back means they walk all the way around the building. Okay. Is there a reason that there's not an entrance into the Aldi parking lot from the traveled lane when there is one for Chick-fil-A? Uh. You mean off of traveled lane? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, you instantly, as you're coming down, you're, you're turning, if you're traveling south and you, there's a light there and you turn in, you're going now east on traveled lane, you would come in that spine room and then come right into the store right there and come in where the cursor is. And then you have another entrance down to the south. So the, I'm the, talking north. They come right there where the cursor is, right in there. Yeah, but if you but look at the Chick-fil-A yeah. parking lot, there's one in that, the S, but Aldi doesn't have one there. That's correct. Why, Why not? They didn't, we, it was not presented as a, an option that they wanted. We, we don't have it on there. It would seem that that would help with the traffic that might be on the, what is that, private, I can't read it, private access? <coughs> No? Just a thought. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that, I mean, Jackie um, Chandler may talk better or more about the, the traffic splits as far as like what's traveling more from what direction. Um, but once they are on travel lane, that distance there, there and they get into the site um, for the grocery store, again, it's, well, I want to say less hectic, you know, the people are coming in, they can move, you know, through a little smoother, uh, get to where they need to go as a destination. Um, so. I think a lot of the traffic concerns would be eliminated if we just didn't have that turnout uh, right so close to, uh, to Route 5. I think that's a lot of that is a lot of our concerns right there, and just knowing the way this business operates and the the popularity of their sandwiches and the uh, the customers who will queue and wait in line for half an hour for a sandwich, you know, uh, yeah, it just it it seems inconsistent. It, it'd be much safer just to close that off, I think, and then have all the people come down private access lane. Uh, that would solve, I think, most of most of the. Or safety concerns yeah. or switch them or, or switch them yeah but I mean that, that's a lot more to ask than just to you know, close up an entrance <laughs> and then the, the other thing I wanted to mention is that the um, I didn't mention before that the site for Chick-fil-A um, this is a prototype for them so they're actually um, it's new so you get, this is a new prototype and it's got a larger kitchen footprint is that, but it's actually, it was done to help with the processing and the, and getting um, things through 
quicker. So the kitchen is actually larger, so people have more space because of the co you know concerns. And then there's more ability for them to work in a space in the kitchen and flow a little better, so things can move out quicker to the customer and then get out. So that's one of the things Chick-fil-A realizes uh, and they're working on, and this is actually one of the prototypes here, the site to try to get things to flow excuse me, flow uh, out to the customer a little little better. I think that was a good point to bring out because I think since COVID, a lot of these restaurants are reconsidering their designs. Just north of this, north of this, we approved a uh, Chipotle. And the what we heard at that meeting was that they were decreasing the size of their dining rooms and they were making drive throughs which wasn't something they had before because there was a lot of uh, to-go orders and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, the footprint of that, when you look at it on aerial compared to the other McDonald's and Burger King nearby, it's like half the size, but it's just, you know, flowing the, the, yeah. the stuff through more quickly, so. In your dining area that you're gonna have in this, and I presume they're gonna have dining, you know, sit down dining inside. They'll still have internal sit-down, yes, sir. Compared to the one in California, how much is this one bigger in dining room size or smaller or about the same? They appear to be right about the same size buildings. So when you say they're going to have a much larger kitchen, um, who's going to suffer, the people that go in and sit down? or I'm just asking, are the seating areas comparable? Um, I'm not, not certain about that, so I can't speak to that. I'm sorry. Well, the California one has a play area also, I think, where this one, I don't know if it has it or not, you know, where the think, kids used to play think, before yeah. COVID. I don't know if they did away with that or not. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Seating is limited. Okay. <coughs> we did our homework this evening, Mr. Rocha. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else for this small part of this hearing? <laughs> Not at this point. And I will remind everybody tonight, we won't go past 10 o'clock. It doesn't, um, no matter what's happening, unless it's, I mean, unless we're like this close to making a motion, <laughs> we're gonna shut down at 10 o'clock, okay? Okay, just wanted to remind. And, and that, also, that's that's standard practice for this board. And I, I remiss also that this, this is not going to go through subdivision process, that it's gonna be a, uh, um, boundary lot adjustment plat because we're not creating any additional lots. So the, the same amount of parcels, I should not lots, parcels that we have will remain. There's four existing, there'll be four when this is reconfigured as far as the property line. So there's no additional lots here. Okay, sir. What's next? So with that, um, we'll have Jackie Chandler from Traffic Concepts. Okay. Good evening, Ms. Chandler. How are you this evening? Good to see you. <laughs> the seat's already hot. <laughs> Casey, good morning. Good evening. For the record, Jackie Chandler with Traffic Concepts. I'll try to go through this quickly. I know you guys probably have a lot of questions, but um, we did prepare a traffic impact study, so the off-site intersections. Um, we didn't look at the internal circulation patterns that you guys have been talking about. We have not looked at that. Um, off-site intersections, we looked at uh, Maryland 5 at Golden Beach, Maryland 5 at Traveled Lane, which is the main access into the site, and Maryland 5 at Maryland 6. Um, our counts were done in December of 2021 and February of 2022, depending on the intersection. Um, we did add a COVID factor. Um, it's, it's rare for us to do that now because uh, the state highway has said, you know, our traffic volumes are, this is our new normal. A lot of people, a lot of businesses um, have figured out that teleworking works. So there are still, the volumes are a bit lower than they were in 2019, but we did take that step to up these just to be conservative. So the, the volumes were upped for a COVID factor. Um, then we added in a growth factor uh, for two years, the expected build out of the site. Uh, we added in background developments in the area. We have um, 
just to name the big ones, Charlotte Hall Station, which is the old, um, was planned for a Safeway many years ago, still on the books, but hasn't started yet. So we have volumes in here for that. Um, we had volumes in here for the proposed Royal Farms and Starbucks. And as well, we have Charlotte Hall Commons, which is the project to the south. Um, that's by the veterinary, I mean the veterinary, the veterans clinic. Um, and the tra so the future conditions we added in, um, I know Mr. Van Kirk, you questioned about the retail pad site. That is included in our future conditions. Um, it's because we don't know the user, we use the standard St. Mary's County retail rates um, for that building. Uh, we included the Aldi as a grocery store, and we included the Chick-fil-A. And what we did for the Chick-fil-A, because uh, the manuals that we use um, just have standard fast food. And the State Highway Administration has decided, <laughs> as we all know, that Chick-fil-A is much busier than a standard fast food. So the State Highway Administration actually came up with trip generation rates. They counted some other Chick-fil-A's and they came up with their own rates. This study includes those rates. They are a bit higher than a standard fast food. Um, the results of the study, um, we had a failure at Maryland 5 at Golden Beach. We had a failure at Maryland 5 at Traveled Lane. Maryland 5 at Maryland 6 was an acceptable sea level of service. So, um, <laughs> I'll get to Maryland 5 at 6 later. Um, Maryland 5 at Golden Beach um, is a D level of service, which is not acceptable in this part of the county, it needs to be a C or better. Um, it's an acceptable level to the state, but it's not acceptable in the county APF. So um, up on the screen is improvement number one. And this developer is offering to remark Golden Beach Road um, heading eastbound. Um, currently, it's a dedicated left turn lane and then a shared through right turn lane. So we're proposing to modify that. Um, I think this is a little bit similar to the other site up the street. We're gonna give a dedicated right turn lane and we're gonna share the throughs and the lefts. Um, that over mitigates the impact of this development and it does a few things. It's, it's still gonna be a D level of service but we're making it better than what it is today. Um, it also will improve the queuing a bit for the southbound um, left turn lane. We know that that's an issue. This project does not add trips to that. Um, I have an ultimate fix for that. I just need to wait for the corner to redevelop <laughs> and get a double left there, but we, there's no right way to do that today. Um, so this improvement will over mitigate for this project at that intersection. Um, the next slide is in Let's, Go ahead. Let's talk about each mitigation intersection as you go through, if that's okay. Mm-hmm, that's you, perfect. Could, could we go back? Yes. I mean, what you're doing there is, I think, a positive thing, but coming eastbound off of that road, it probably has 100 cars a day. So you not know what you're mitigating because the other side of the intersection Nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not saying that your development is causing more on that, but it's certainly gonna cause something. And you're not doing anything on that side of the road of Route 5 on Golden Beach Road, which is what's needed. Correct, but re remember that by restriping on the eastbound side, I can get the vehicles through the intersection quicker because you're gonna be able to make a right on red. So you're not gonna get stopped. So by, I can take time away from that for the signal and give it to the other side. This is not a huge fix. I'll admit that, it's not a huge fix to the intersection, but it does over mitigate the impact of this development. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. It looks to me like the developer, I think the developer owns all the property to the south of 
Golden Beach Road, over there where Fred's Liquor is. Looks to me like if they put another lane or something in there, now you're talking about real mitigation that would really help with, with whatever happens in there. I mean, you're taking travel lane, and not you, but I'm saying they're taking travel lane and making that, in my opinion, really nice. Mm -hmm. Five lanes, it's great. And they don't have anywhere near the traffic on travel lane that Golden Beach Road has. And what do they have? Three lanes. So I don't, I don't quite understand where the trade-off is for, right. yes, travel lane is going to be, I really think, nice, you know, with what they're proposing there. But it looks like Golden Beach Road, the mitigation on the other side by the old Fitzgerald's Realty, like I said, to get 100 cars a day that come out of there, it's not, I don't see what that's doing for, for o over here, which you could get some traffic from. Aldi and Chick-fil-A that come up the back and, and, and back out into all that. Just right. don't see and how that's mitigating because you're still going by the preface that State Highway has to agree to the restriping, which would make sense they agree to the restriping, but then they'd have to change the signal times. Mm -hmm. They'd have to approve that also. So it's all hindrance upon are they going to do all this? Right. You and know, the, the changing, changing signal times, you know, you rob one thing, Somebody has to pay, mm -hmm. you know, if, you, it's, if, if it's a give and take. I've never thought much of restriping in signals. If you make the signal f faster or slower going north or south, east or west has to suffer. If you do it east or, east or west, north and south has to suffer. So I've never been an advocate of signalization timing and, and, and stuff. I'm sure it's going to help something, but... Mm -hmm. uh, right, and we, we would not be taking time from north or south. It would just be that because I can get people through quicker eastbounds, if I can, even if it's three seconds from that signal, if I can clear that signal cycle, I can take that three seconds and add it to the other side. It's not affecting north-south. It's just when I, even when you make up what seems like a minor improvement, you can get a good operation, operational change from that. And remember that also these, there is a back road to come in from Golden Beach. So there is a way to get through the back. Um, to the you mean Old Face Church Road or, or are you talking about down by this development here? By this Triangle, Triangle Drive. Drive. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so understood that this and, uh, you know, the fix is going to have to be when uh, Fred's Liquors on the corner, assuming that that will someday redevelop, um, that we can steal some of their property and, you know, make a major change here. But in the meantime, this improvement would over mitigate the impact of this project. The only, th the only point I was making is the same developer owns the Fred Decker property, doesn't he? I, I cannot. I, I'll ask the developer. I'm, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to necessarily ask you that, but Man, that's all I have on that particular one. Okay. For myself. Uh, before you continue, sorry. I have a question. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm not sure it's for you or it's for our, our staff here. Um, I mentioned earlier um, to the engineer, um, and unless somebody on the board can correct my memory, didn't we approve a Chipotle five doors down from here a couple of meetings ago? Yes. Well, yeah. yes. yes. So why wasn't that listed in the background conditions of approved developments for your traffic study? We could have put it, uh, we could have added that in there. What, what happened with the Chipotle was it was a redevelopment. So they could take credit for the trips that were already there for the, the motel? hotel motel. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was minimal impact. Yeah. From a motel to a, to a, to Chipotle? Yeah, come on. I mean, yeah. I find that hard. Yeah. Well, it has to be, in, in order to require a study, it's not, it doesn't have to be less than the hotel. It has to be less than 50 additional peak hour trips to require a traffic study. And Chipotle wouldn't increase peak hour trips by 50? Correct. The, just the peak hour, correct. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it, it could have been. The expert. <laughs> <laughs> That's because of the pass-by percentages, too, right? Correct. Which is why it all, mostly always takes it under that. Oh, I see. That's yeah. correct. Because it got, like, most of them have, like, a 76% generated, pass okay. by. I got you. I got you. Okay, I understand right. that better. Right. Yeah, they come off you. as well. Yes. I've got one question for you. When you were explaining the intersection 
Did you say that um, the, um, you're on Golden Beach Road right now uh, and you're coming out? Uh, did you say that was a um, that right turn was stopped currently by the light and by restriping you were going to go to um, right on red? Going to go to this? No. Correct. But that's I'm talking on the Golden Beach uh, on the uh, north northbound side of that of uh, five. I'm not proposing anything not, over there. You're not proposing this. anything over there. It's all across the road. Correct. Well, that's not helping anything. No. <laughs> okay. That's my opinion. Oh, I, and Mr. Thompson, it it is it will still be a D level service. Yeah. Um, the idea with medic in this area, we are allowed to mitigate our impact. So if the slate adds one second of delay. We have to improve it by one second. We're improving it by five. So we're over mitigating, understanding that it's still going to be a D. Yeah, because in St. Mary's County that I can think of, there are three really bad intersections, and this is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't say what number it is, but it's 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 up there, with number, <laughs> number one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> Okay, and then we'll move on to improvement number two. So this is Maryland 5 at Traveled Lane. Um, so today um, it's restricted to lefts in only and then rights out on the side streets. Um, our proposal is to make it a full movement intersection, signalize it, um, provide a double left in from southbound 5. Um, the idea of that double left is not, it's not necessary from a volume standpoint, but it helps us with timing. We can get people through the intersection faster and, and keep the progression on five. Um, double left out with a separate right turn lane. And then uh, we'll have, we'll continue to have the right turn lane in from northbound. But we're gonna put, you'll see the little um, yellow, that's a raised island in the middle. Um, I know there was con some concern from the residents about folks that tend to use the shoulder and drive fast up five so that they can make the right on Golden Beach. So we're gonna put a raised island in there that'll physically prohibit people from doing that at this location. Um, and then you'll see there's a right, that right in that was discussed a little earlier going into the Chick-fil-A. Um, and then you'll see the cul-de-sac. The reason that we cul-de-sac that, um, it ties in today to Traveled Lane, but with the volume that's expected here, that would never work. It would just be too close. So we cul-de-sac that because it's a state highway and the state highway, we approached them about abandoning that and it, it was a no-go. Mm. So our thought was to cul-de-sac it. It's not gonna tie into travel. Um, and then the right in to Chick-fil-A becomes just an in only. It's just a way to relieve some of that traffic to get people into Chick-fil-A and not having to have them drive down to the next entrance off of Traveled. How far is that distance between from 235 or five into that right in? That's, I believe LA. that's about 200 feet. But again, it's an in only. Right. Um, as folks, I mean, theoretically, you're if you're coming from the light from the southbound direction, um, you know, you're going 15 miles an hour. If you're coming from the north, it's not a free right. It's going to be a stop. So theoretically, you're nine to 10 miles per hour. So I don't think that's <coughs> a major concern. The state has looked at it, um, you know, for any issues with backing into the state right of way. They don't, they're okay with it. They're okay with the cul-de-sac. Um, they're okay with the signal. Uh, the signal, the other leg of the signal, the steakhouse will be part of the signal as well. They'll have indications and have access to the signal. So, traveled lane, currently a private road. 
Does it remain private? Uh, that would be a question for Mr. Orocho. Okay. He said yes. He says yes. Private. Okay. I'm just wondering who's going to maintain it, who's going to take care of it, who's going to plow the snow. I'm just. So we will. The de okay. The, de the developer would. Let me ask you another question that you may not know. At the end of Travel Lane, if you're traveling east, and you get back there like past where all the lawnmowers are at the market, you can make a left and go up that back road behind some of the businesses and stuff. What's going to happen there? Do you know or is that another? That, that, okay. Yeah, that's probably for Mr. Rosemore. Okay. That's all I have on that section. The addition of another light would now bring us up to eight lights between the McKay Shopping Center and the Wawa at 5 and 235. Eight traffic lights. Yeah, and one thing I could add to that is that this signal will be um, physically tied to the signal at Golden Beach, so they will be made, they will be coordinated for flow along Maryland 5. I just, I just, when I was thinking about the fact that we did a bypass through Hughesville because we had one light that held up traffic <laughs> for years. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to have eight in like what, four miles? And you're adding another lane coming south, turn lane there. The left, left turn. An, an, an additional, so there'll be two. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I'm talking about on five. Heading south on five yes. and we travel, there'll be two left turn bays there. Same yes. length as the other one, I think, on the plans, it looked like? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you mentioned that, then the outside, or however you want to look at the two turn lanes, one of them are going to be able to turn into, unless they, they're turning all the way around, pulling a U-turn. Will that be a U-turn intersection too, by the way? If you're heading south, you got two turn lanes there. Yeah. Is, we, um, is that going to be a U-turn? We haven't designed the signal yet, but I think we could still allow a U-turn there. Just for the, the inside end, lane. On the inside lane. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not going to take a U-turn. Got two people, and we're going to turn in there. Basically, the way it looks to me right now, you got the out the southern turn lane. It's going to have to turn into one or two different spots or then merge into it and the other one is going to go straight through there correct well there'll be two receiving lanes on traveled lane mm -hmm. but one of them is is basically a turn lane that that goes one the, the very first turn into uh chick-fil-a and the second one uh for the uh the uh Inner road, I'll say in between it. I'm not sure of the names of these yet. Um, yeah, it, so the two lanes will, the, I guess the outermost lane will end, will be a right turn lane drop into the Aldi. Then it merges into the other one after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one lane beyond that. You have to make some quick decisions. Mm -hmm. Do I eat, do I shop, or do I merge? <laughs> okay. Okay, and then improvement number three. So, Maryland 5 at Maryland 6. When the traffic impact study was prepared, this was a sea level of service, which, which is acceptable. Um, after the study was completed and reviewed, the State Highway Administration came out here and made some changes to the intersection. And in doing that, they, um, they took away a through lane to head towards La Plata. So if you see the top where it says existing, um, it's kind of hard to tell there, but it's a through and then a left turn bay only. In the past, oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. In the past, it was what's shown on the bottom as proposed. So it was a through and then a through shared with a left. So you could have two lanes heading across um, in front of the library and then they would merge back into one. Um, 
just in front of the trail crossing, just before the trail crossing. So the state highway went out and they made some changes to the trail crossing. They thought, you know, maybe we had some safety issues there. So they put up a flash, the flashing beacons, um, so you have to, you don't have to, but somebody on the trail can push the button and then it'll flash to alert motorists that somebody's about to cross the trail. Um, the state law is that the vehicle has to yield to the pedestrian or the bike. Um, so the state went out and made these changes as part of that safety improvement for the trail, they took away that additional through lane. When they did that, they caused the intersection to go to an F level of service. I'm sure there are many people in this audience that will attest to the fact <laughs> that it was terrible and Route 5 was backed all the way up almost to Golden Beach. Um, I've had numerous conversations with State Highway um, about allowing this developer to put that lane back so that we can have two lanes crossed. The most recent meeting I had with the state was January the 23rd. State Highway um, was there, uh, the county was there. Um, so we talked through how to make this intersection function at an acceptable level again. What the state found, they went out, um, because I badgered them every week, they went out and they looked at it and they found that they had some equipment failures um, that tie this signal to the one to the south at Maryland 236. They fixed that. They made some signal timing changes to give more time to Route 5 South. So I think um, it has improved significantly, but we are still experiencing a D level of service now, which is unacceptable. So State Highway has agreed that they are going to do some additional modifications to the trail. They're going to put some quick curb along the shoulder areas so that vehicles, if somebody stopped to let somebody cross, that another vehicle can't come up and go around them on the shoulder. That seems to have been the problem with that trail. Um, so they're gonna, they're gonna put this in as a temporary, um, as a trial and they're gonna watch it. And if they feel like that's safe enough, they're gonna allow the developer to make that permanent and to put the lane back in. Um, if, that, if that does not occur, there's another fix for the intersection that's not as good of a fix. It's not a long-term fix. But we could restripe eastbound to provide two lanes across. Right now it's just one lane across into the median. Doesn't help the intersection as much, but it would mitigate this developer's impact. So I have two options here. We're waiting for the state because we wanna put that lane back in, heading towards La Plata. And hopeful to get that in the next few months. But if not, we can certainly restripe the eastbound direction and mitigate for this project. Well, since nobody wants to say anything, I'll say it. I don't know that this is really gonna impact up the road. Um, it's nice that this intersection is going to get fixed. It can, it can take anything. It's got, I would worry more about this intersection for buggy traffic and such going through it than, uh, than traffic. And, and it's good that the state highway and their kind self would, is willing to uh, help with that intersection. Yeah. But uh, I'm more worried about what's up north than I am with this one. See, That's just my opinion. In, in my opinion, it's the same thing. It's great that they're mitigating that, mm -hmm. and it's great that they're mitigating the other side of Golden Beach Road. 
But the, the main side of Golden Beach Road gets nothing. And I'm not saying that this development particularly has a, a major, major, major impact on that. I'm not saying people are, every car is gonna go down all along Triangle Road and come back out on Golden Beach Road, but it, it is gonna add traffic to that, I think. And, and I know you said it's a one or two seconds or something, and I guess the state has already said that's okay. As far as mitigation, I, I don't see, I mean, you're mitigating the two spots that, for this development, I don't think need to mitigate. Not that I'm a traffic engineer, not that I work for the state. Common sense wise, you're not mitigating where mitigation is needed, to, to me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in the um, Maryland 5 at Traveled Lane, there, there is a huge effort there. To, yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, to make everything function and... Yeah. Well, you really can't function well without that light. That light's been needed for, you know, nobody wants an extra light, but if you ever needed one, it was right there. Right. I mean, you go up there on the weekend, my God, I wouldn't have... I don't live at that part of the county, have been through it many times, but uh, to have to deal with that every weekend... <laughs> I was up there Saturday, my grandkids like walk around the market. We was up there Saturday, but the traffic is something up there on Saturday. And that's in the middle of the winter. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, and I know that's why the state initially put the bollards up that they did. To they were putting some more on in Saturday when I was up there, some more of the bollards. Like if you're coming north, they were putting more in the road. I'm not sure what they were for over in the intersection, mm -hmm. heading north in like the turn lane, I guess. I don't know if they're trying to stop U-turns there or if you can even do them. I'm not 100% sure, but they were tarring the things down and putting them poles up Saturday. Huh. State Highway was. So I'm not sure why, but... That's all. Uh, well, there was an extra picture in there that I just... Um, we added this picture just to show what the state had done for the crossing there to in improve the safety. Jack, let me ask you a few more questions. If you, is, is that all the improvements, mitigation? I have a few more for traffic before I ask the developer some questions. Um, all the proposals in this plan for the mitigation and the restriping and the lights and the additional turn lane into traveled and traveled lane, well, I guess if they own travel lane, they can do what they want, except at the intersection would have to be approved, I would assume, by State Highway. Yes. But all that other stuff, everything else that is within a state road or right away or turn or movement, it's all hinged upon an approval by State Highway. So this plan that we're looking at approving, if it's approved, is, is still hinged upon all them ifs. The state highway has approved this conceptually. Mm -hmm. We will have to go, we've started the process for um, signal design. So there could be tweaks, but they have approved the concept. So they've approved the light. Yes. Just, you may have to change a couple things. That's the main thing is the light, I guess. Correct. Okay. And when I looked at the traffic impact study, it looked like, and I can never read these traffic impact studies anymore. They used to have really nice, I'm not saying it's not nice, but it's very confusing to the lay person like myself. We do when, that on purpose, Mr. Banker. Yes, I've been believing that. <laughs> the t total trips of the proposed new plan on page 21 shows 7,325. Is, is, is that accurate? Total daily trips? Yes. 73.25, yes. And that's half in and half out? Is that, is that what that means? That's correct. And that does not include pass-by trips. We do not take pass-by trips off of the total ADT. So um, probably about... I think this had this 50. had less. Yeah, like 50 or 51? It's about 50% is... because it's 50. For the Chick-fil-A... In the PM peak, it's 55% pass by. For the supermarket, 24%. So somewhere around 50% of that is gonna be vehicles that are already on the road. Okay, my point is, well, I don't know. I, 
if I go to the Aldi down in the park, which I do quite often, I'm not just hoping I pass by. It's, it's a destination for me. So I don't, you know, them specialty stores to me are not something that you necessarily pass by. And I think giving it 50%, I think that's even more generous than normal, isn't it? Uh, not for Chick-fil-A. That's pretty typical. For the supermarket, we had 24% in the PM, which is taken from ITE. Um, but like you said, it may be for the bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. So the existing trips now, it said was 1,094. So I guess you have to add the existing to the new when you're getting that. Is is that what's projected at the whole development? You know, the end result of of there. That's just theirs. Yes. Okay. My, my question is, where does it show me? I always ask you about the distribution. Yes. Where are things coming in? And you used to say a nice percentage, 50% here, 50% there. Now it's got all these road charts with numbers that I... I know. Um, what's page the, 23. Okay. And it is a map. Um, there it is. Okay. So 60% from the north... 40% from the south, but we split those up as you can see. So 20% at the very top of the page, that's folks heading north and, you know, from the north on Route 5, and then 25% from Golden Beach, 15. But I'm talking about going in and out of the egress and ingress that is proposed for the plan. I got you. The percentage of what's in and out. Okay. It seems like that's not ever in, in these anymore. I like to see what, what they propose, you know, is, is coming in and, and going out. Where, where do they think based upon, I mean, they used to be included in a lot of these plans. Right. And I think it, it and it, I can, in the future, add those in. Um, if you look at the chart on page 21 that you were looking at initially, if you, like the very first line for the Chick-fil-A, in the PM, there's 150 vehicles coming in and 185 going out. So that, it, the percentage of those, I, that's the percentage of in, ins and outs, and that's taken directly from ITE. But what I'm saying is you have three ways in and out. I'm looking for the percentage of each individual road. They used to say that. It used to be a, a map in there that said this one's going to have 30% in and 30% out. This one's going to have, but it doesn't have that any longer. Right. It doesn't show us where you're projecting the traffic to be. For the site access. For the actual mean. site access. Okay, I gotcha. It used to have that, but it doesn't. if you could include that. Right. In the future, site access. Yes, I will certainly do that. And, and the reason it's not in this one is because traveled lane was private. Typically, if we have a public road, um, and we don't show the percentages, I agree with you, um, but we'll show the ins and outs. But yes, in the future, that's something I can add if that's beneficial for you, for sure. Okay. Let's see. We already beat the queuing space up. That. Okay. okay. Let me ask you a question about, can we bring up the site plan again? No, back to the actual where it shows the Chick-fil-A and yeah, that, that's fine. If you're coming north and they're turning to get on that loop road, what is the, is there an approach? Because right now you basically, you turn off the road and come up into a little lane, the loop lane right there, it's no real turnoff lane to come up in there. What's, what's gonna be right there? Uh, we are not proposing any changes there. Um, initially, like I said, we reached out to the state to try to get them to abandon the road. Um, they were not agreeable to that. Uh, we're projecting that, you know, based on our distributions, we have 40% of the people coming from the south that probably 30% will use that to enter the property. You don't have anybody exiting there because if you're, you can only make a right out. So if you wanna make a right, if you wanna head north, chances are you're gonna head north. But what I'm saying is there's no slowdown lane there. Correct. For people to get over that wants to use that southern, I mean, that, that whatever, I don't know if that road even has a name, but that is an entrance, isn't it? 
It is. It's to get a onto Loop yeah. Road, and then it goes all the way up the the length of that past parcel nine. Correct? Is that? That's not part of the Loop Road. That's a new proposed road to go back that Courtney's pointing but, at I mean, now. There's a turn there now that comes off of Route 5 into the market. It's further south of there, yes. Further yes. south of there. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is there's no approach there. It's no... There's no deceleration no lane. No deceleration lane at all. And I would assume that this is going to cause, maybe not on Saturday mornings like it does now, but I would assume this is normally going to cause more traffic to have to go from... Well, people don't do 55 anymore, and that's not your problem or the developer's problem. 70, and get down to a speed where they can all of a sudden turn with no lane to decel in. It doesn't seem like a very, it just does not seem like a, like I say, you're doing mitigation in, in spots that are okay for something, but they're, to me, they're really, that's really a an overlook, in, in my opinion, on that of having, and I know it doesn't have it now, but you're going from basically one day a week of traffic to every day mm -hmm. of the week, maybe except Sundays, I guess, Chick-fil-A, I guess this one's going to be closed on Sundays also, I'm, I'm assuming, but right. it just seems like there should be a lane, whatever the a required diesel lane, we see them on most projects and there's none, and there's none here, so right. to and me, that's a, ma that's a problem. Right, and, and there's we, also a couple businesses that tap off of that Loop Road that are that are south of of this development altogether. The sawmill and uh, things like that. They do tap into that off of Loop Road. Uh, they come in, I'll say, behind the buildings of the farm, the current farmers market, and get back in there. And if I'm look, I'm just looking at the county GIS map right now. I uh, don't know what day they took this picture, but there's a lot of there's a lot of cars back in there. At, the, at various um, at the various businesses that are there, so um. yeah, and that's that intersection exists today. It's a state intersection. Um, we did not get any comments from the state about revising that. Um, Maybe that should be looked into. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I don't say you don't want to cut the other. You know, with all this happening with Chick Fil A and stuff, you don't want to cut the existing businesses off that are there. Uh, no. Well, that's going to remain. The the, uh, the, the yeah. turn is like right here. Yeah. It's just no way to. Well, I mean, if you got extra people slowing down, now they're either going to go past that that lane that you just pointed out, or, or they're going to run into the back of somebody. And then they can go in there and, and come up here. But there's, as I say, there's other businesses that are back in there. So that that full southern, which on that road, which doesn't have a name. Um, I'm just saying, have some consideration. Yeah, I'm just saying with, with adding full-time businesses now, that's going to be open all the time in a restaurant. Sure. And and you're still going to have a farmer's market off of this, still going to, off mm -hmm. of this traveled lane. At the back but, of it, you're going to have but, the, the Yeah, but they can, I mean, just, I'm just talking about cars going into here mm -hmm. to get to the Chick-fil-A. And when this is opened, mm -hmm. they're going to be coming down. in from the south. Sure. I'm pointing down to the far south yeah. where Route 5 Need intersects Loop Lane. So everybody knows what I'm exactly Howard. talking about. Mr. Rocho, come up to the microphone, please. Awesome, I would just want to mention, if you go to the third slide, what, what you're discussing and you're looking at what you can see, I think it's the third slide. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think it's the third slide. To the right. Okay. That one shows the loop to the south and then what you're all talking about, excuse me, what you're all talking about as far as um, the beginning of the loop road, how it, yep. how it there. transitions and so forth. And yep. um, so anyway, I just wanted to mention that. So you. That's a good picture. We appreciate that. So I guess that's my, that's my point is that you're going from something that that entrance has all been there a long time, I'm assuming, but now you're adding businesses that's going to be occupied seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And you've got cars that's got to go from, you know, whatever the speed limit is, down to be able to turn. It's, it, 
and I understand the state may not have made a comment about it, but I really think that that's that's a, a major problem here. Yeah, we can take a look at that. And it looks like there's a shoulder area there. So that's probably what people use today is the shoulder. It is legal now to do that since October of 2021. Well, it's actually legal to go around the car on the shoulder, but mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about ingress and egress. Right. So that, yeah. that's tamping down that part of it and, and turning it into a, something completely different. Right. Plus, I don't want somebody coming around me right there. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> right. Bad enough. We can certainly take a look at that, providing a deceleration lane there. And I, and I think because right now you're right, they use the shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. If you know the if you know the turns there, you use the shoulder because if you slow up, you're going to get back. You're going to, someone's going to anyway. So maybe maybe if you, if the, the state would agree, if nothing more than that, if you're going to use the shoulder, you could use the shoulder, stripe it as such. Right. Um, make a deceleration lane. You know, we converted lanes on 235 from shoulders to travel lanes. Mm -hmm. You know, when we put those little abutments that you're talking about, so people act a little better. Not so much better, but they act a little better. <laughs> so it would seem to me that if even if you didn't, for, the, for whoever does it, the state, let's, you know, we, we send a lot of money to the state. Maybe the state will send us a little something down this way. Perhaps, perhaps they would just consider to restripe it, maybe as a deacceleration lane. Right. I mean, that in the in the short term would be a whole lot better off than not having anything, mm -hmm. because they're right. I mean, if you don't know it's there, um, you're going to, you know, you're going to wind up hitting the brakes, and it's going to be a problem, and the traffic's going to be a lot more than it is today. Right. So, just a thought. Okay. Hey, Mr. Chandler, I have just one question for you. Yes. Um, you're going over the various warrants here on page 48. Uh, it states that Maryland uh, State Highway is no longer releasing crash data consultants. When did, when did that change, and is there any reasoning behind it? Well, it's been about, I want to say eight years now. Okay, because that's the first time <laughs> I've actually read that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, even when we do traffic signal warrant studies now, unless we're, as a, cons as a private consultant, unless we are doing a signal warrant analysis for a municipality or jurisdiction, we are not allowed to get accident data. Um, so bet. <laughs> I said I bet. Yeah. So we actually took the step when they first, when the state highway first started doing this, um, we filed for a FOIA request to say, you know, we need it. We need it to do a signal warrant analysis. And they say it's protected from even a FOIA request. It's protected data. Um, I think the reason that they did it was because there were so many attorneys um, <laughs> um, actually pulling the data for lawsuits. Mm. So I think they stopped all of that, um, but they hurt us as consultants when we're trying to see if a traffic signal is necessary. It, it, in a previous previous job of mine, Pennsylvania, we were uh, my agency was collecting um, uh, traffic counts for PennDOT, and um, we were answering requests. It, I mean, basically, had one person dedicated to doing that. So mm -hmm. ultimately, they had me involved in writing an application that it was available for free online. So states look at things very differently. They thought having the crash data out there mm -hmm. was uh, it's better to have the, the data out there for the public, but it's, yeah. a, it's a shame that Maryland well, feels that way. Yeah, and there's there's also, um, for crash data, there's two different types. So every, we have access as the general public to every incident call that comes in. So you can go to your local sheriff and you can say, hey, I want to see every call that you've had. Now, maybe a legitimate call, Maybe they show up and there's nobody there. There's none of that is filtered, um, so it's not helpful when we're trying to look for um, accidents that determine whether a signal will help. Um, 
so we can't, what happens is the State Highway Administration, their Office of Traffic and Safety, they take all of that data statewide and they filter it. And they, they look at whether there are fatalities, they look at the road, whether it was wet, whether it was snow, um, whether it was driver error. They look at all those things and they put all that crash data um, into a form that says, hey, this area could use an improvement. It, it's it's deficient in its safety. It's not drivers. It, you know, a lot of accidents are driver error, um, and they use that data to determine what they call high accident locations. So the state themselves, they look at their own intersections and they say, oh, okay, yeah, we have an unusual pattern here that's not driver error. It's definitely related to something geometric, so we're gonna make a change there. But now they won't share that data with us. So I don't know those high accident locations anymore. Um, I can't get the data to verify that. So when we do a signal warrant, I just have to put for that warrant, I can't get this data. So I don't, I, I don't know whether it's correctable, whether it's gonna correct any well, incidents. It's, it's beneficial. Some years ago, there were some of us that were, that were here were advocates of putting a traffic light at St. John's in 235. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we struggled, struggled with the state with regard to warrants. Oh, it's not warranted, it's not, and I guess you know, a lot of us said, well, how many folks does it take? How many times do people have to run together for, it, for this to happen? And we went, we, we pressed and pressed and pressed, and whether you know, they, you know, someone saw the light and they, and they put a, a, a light there, but clearly a light was necessary. Right. Uh, and having that data, and we pulled the data locally uh -huh. for that very reason. Right. Um, but the state pushed back, you know, was pushing back constantly. Yeah, because they, the there are several warrants. You, you look at volume warrants, right. um, and on a side street, the, the average number is you need 53 left turns per hour for eight hours of the day. That'll generally get you the volume warrant. Then you have to look at accident data, which we can't do now. Um, there are a number of factors. Just because you meet the volume warrant doesn't mean that the state will allow you to put a signal in. We run into this the mitigation issue not once or twice, but lots. And so, if you can't bring up, an, you know, if you can't bring up an intersection to X, whatever X is, then you have to go to the next intersection. In this case, maybe six, um, and try to mitigate at some level. Uh, to, to offset your inability to mitigate for the, for the one that you're actually trying to mitigate for. Right. Um, and it becomes very convoluted. I mean, at FDR Boulevard and four, we they couldn't make the warrants and do that, so they wound up at Wildwood Boulevard, and there was never a light there. Uh -huh. Needed one, wasn't warranted. So what happened was it got mitigated into existence. Right. So, I mean, I, Yes. You, you try to do this with your hands tied behind your back. I could not do this. I could not do your job. You're feeling my pain, Mr. Evans. I've been at this for 30 years. <laughs> so I just had a couple of questions from Ms. Chandler. Just I wanted to make sure we're on the record. Um, when, just for the for the listening audience, when you did your traffic study, you took the most conservative approach. Is that correct? That's correct. So, for example, could you, you speak into the microphone? Sorry about more? that. That's all right. So, y you took the most conservative approach. So, for example, the growth rate, the rec the data showed 0.37, but you applied a point a, a five a 0.5 percent, correct? That's correct. Okay, and um, the the improvements. To Golden Beach Road, understanding the board's and the commission's comments, and we take those to heart. Um, with the mitigation provided at five and Golden Beach Road, it will improve the situation better than it is today without this project, correct? That's correct. And as this, we're at concept site plan, but as we move through, we've talked a lot about the fact that these are state roads and that you've been working with the state. As you move forward, you'll continue working with the state, uh, for example, to look at that D cell lane. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. 
and I am not a personal injury attorney, let's for the record. <laughs> Good shot there, Ms. Weir. <laughs> okay. What else you have for us? That's all I have. Developer. Yep. Any other questions from Ms. Chandler before she goes and hides from us for a little while? Okay, we'll go, Thank you. go bring the developer up. Does anybody on this board need a break? I do. Okay. Before I get you up, why don't you let us take a five-minute break? Oh, sure. If, if that's okay, I'd, I'd appreciate you. Uh, it's approved. Okay. <laughs> so moved.
that going? We don't have any control, control no. over the inside of that development. Right. But there are people that like to think that they do. <laughs> okay, we're about. back in session. I'm a business person first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, so Justin Rosemore with um, the developer is here to answer some questions. I know that the board has. And I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah, I swore you in. You swore me in. Yes, sir. Yes. So I stand up. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. So, actually, I was going to answer questions. Uh, I didn't have anything prepared to say. I, I just wanted to answer your questions. Okay, I have some. Sure. Um, with the current picture that's up there, it's a great picture. When you come in Travel Lane, heading east, and you get down to that other road on the left, is that road right there? What is that road? Is is that triangle, or does triangle meet up at the end of that? Um, it, I'm not sure if that road has a name to it. Uh, do you know? Does it? It, uh, it? it does not. I was up there yesterday and the day before. Yeah, I was down there too Saturday. I happened to look when I was at yeah. the market. But so the it, whole back side of the property. Yes. Okay. 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 There is, but I don't know. Maybe somebody out here knows the name of it, but yeah, I, I, I didn't see a name anyway. I'm not sure. Mr. Sure. No sure. Mr. Sure. It does, I think. It's not posted. Yeah. It's not. Sorry. So, no, it so we. It may not be posted. People It's not, but it. we, we, it's called Henry Lane. So on the old plats, Henry, Henry. On the old plats, it's. Lane runs down between, um, runs from, from 235 down the side by the market. That's where Henry Lane runs. The one we're talking about, I think, is the one that runs down the back side of this property from Henry Lane all the way to Golden Beach. Well, all the way, you know, convoluted, but to Golden Beach eventually. The triangle. You can see it on the on the map if you yeah. look at it yeah. right on here. Yeah. Really That's what I'm one? talking about. It's like an extension of Triangle Lane, but I don't yeah. believe it's called Triangle. Oh, we have to. We, no okay. Okay. My we can't can't have my my point about that is who owns that road? Is it Public Works or is that part of yours also? That's, that's part of our development. Okay. okay. So with the proposal of the farmer's market relocating back to there. Yes, sir. And with the new development in the front, if approved, I think that intersection that traveled and whatever is going to get an awful lot of use. Even people coming out of the Chick-fil-A, Aldi's, that may not want to go back out on five. They go back up there. Not saying that the people who are up that way want the traffic, but they could utilize that and go to Triangle and then cross over or Golden Beach Road or whatever. Yes, sir. I think something needs to be done at that intersection. Would, would you as the developer be willing to put a roundabout there? Uh, going to be an awful lot of traffic right there. Yeah, that I'm actually unsure. Um, but you own it. Yeah, so we own that. Um, I mean, it's something we can explore. Um, I'm just not sure. We have a number of leases right back there uh, that you know, we should be able to work around. Uh, I believe a portion of that is actually owned by the state for the, is that a pumping station, a pump station there? Oh, you're talking about the Metcom property? Metcom, yeah. It's just... If you have to speak, Mr. Orocho, come up to a microphone. Yeah, do you just want to stay up here? Thanks. My apologies. So there's a piece of property that's uh, it's Metcom, and it's if you look at the it's right if um, if you look at that area that looks like a circle or not like a um, elongated track there uh, down in the middle of the drawing. Keep cursor moving to the left. Just keep moving the cursor to the left. Right there, there is the uh, is the area where Metcom has a, a parcel, uh, and uh, that's going to remain there. So uh, I think what Justin, uh, Mr. Rosemary is referring to is that with a roundabout there, we're not sure how much we can encroach on that piece of property and obviously disturb it with with what's there. So, and and I just looked at the tax map. So what happens is Henry Lane from the top is labeled Henry. It, is. it touches this north-south, but then it's it's not labeled, so we just refer to it as Henry because it's the closest name joining this 
north-south uh, road extension. So, but I just I think if they had some kind of a of a traffic control device there, and I'm talking about a light or nothing, mm -hmm. it would certainly make traffic. I think it would ease traffic out of your new site. Also, people would be more willing to uh, to to use that. I think. Right. Up. So, I, so I think that's something we can explore. Uh, it's something we can look at. Um, you know, as Nelson, uh, Mr. Rocho pointed out, as long as it's not uh, uh, encroaching on the Metcom property there, um, but that is something that we can take a look at. I mean, there's always the option of putting a stop. You know, if it's not currently stop signed and, and okay. lane lane widths that would be more conducive to movements and flow, we could look at that too. Yeah, I don't think a stop sign would necessarily, I mean, it'd be guessed, I think there's a stop sign there now coming one way. I parked there the other day and looked around after we had walked around the market and stuff, but. Um, so so I think looking at it, what, I, what I'm hearing the client say is that he's willing to, as we move forward, we're, he's willing to explore that and improvements in that area based on available um, right of way as far as land, based on an examination of his leases, um, existing leases, and of course the design and um, associated costs with that, but certainly something that we want to explore. Okay. Second thing is the diesel lane that we talked about on Route 5. Right. To, to me, I don't even see how State Highway would have given conceptual consent to a plan that has no way for cars to slow down off of a main thoroughfare. Right. Yeah, so I agree. I mean, I think uh, deceleration lane uh, right there at that entrance coming from the south headed north uh, wouldn't make sense. Uh, it, once, it, once again, I mean, it's all a question of right of way. Uh, as long as the right of way exists and state highway permits us to put in the deceleration lane, that is something I'm, I'm willing to add. Okay. Um. I know there's no space up on Golden Beach Road. I touched on this with Ms. Chandler, and and I heard a couple of other members said it also. You're mitigating spots just to get this approved. That makes no impact on on, on this, in in my opinion. You know, you're doing down Route 5 and 6, which helps down there, and you're doing the opposite side of Golden Beach Road, which to me has no impact on all the cars, it's still gonna be on Great Mills Road if it moves one more car through in a, in a second. I don't see, you, you know, the, this plan has to add more than a car or two, I would venture to say. So I don't see how restriping and, and retiming something, if even approved, helps that. And it looks to me like there could be, I know that failing intersection is not your fault. But it looks to me that we should be doing our due diligence to improve things that need improving. I mean, it's like putting a putting a <laughs> overhead light somewhere where there's never going to be anybody there just because it's easy to get to and, and put in. You know, you don't have the lights where the sidewalks are, but we're going to put one over here. This doesn't s seem to help with this project. Yes, does it overall mitigate something? May maybe so. Maybe that's the way the code or the ordinance is written, you know, maybe that's our fault. But it just it seems like there would be a little more thought given to the, those other couple things I mentioned and possibly Golden Beach Road, if there's any space at all. I don't know if there's any, you know, I don't think there's too much space between curb to curb. The Exxon's got curbs up, I guess, and Fred's Liquor has curbs up, I'm assuming. Right. So, is it Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so, a, who was it? Uh, I think it was Sue or Jackie uh, that discussed this uh, previously. Um, so the 
That area does belong to Fred Slicker. The entire parking lot, everything there is under a lease with them. And then so what Jackie was pointing out is correct. I mean, when we go to redevelop that, that is something that has to be addressed, you know, with the addition of possibly another lane. Um, when we have long-term leases with all those people there, whether it's uh, Fred Slicker or the adjacent, everybody in that building has a lease and has the parking lot that we cannot change without their permission. Uh, so is that something we can do when their leases come up in five, seven years? Then that's that's the opportunity. That's the right time to make that change. But it's not something I can unilaterally do today you know, because they have a right to that land. Okay. And, and also, uh, going to the east from the intersection at Golden Beach, uh, when it transitions from the liquor from that lease parcel, it's there's a, um, almost a spur piece that belongs to the joiner that they own. So that there's j not just all just a Rosemore piece. There's going to be some neighbor having to help work out to get that lane width to what probably SH anybody would want. So there's others that would have to get involved. So it's not not solely all. There's sure there's some that Again, as he said, some leasing issues get cleared and maybe there's some stuff, but there's also working with the adjoiner. Okay, I can accept the leases in, in place. Let me ask you a question about, we were talking about possibly was any consideration giving to, given to swapping the... Correct. Yeah, um, so Chick-fil-A... Uh, requires the frontage. Aldi does not require the frontage. Would they like the frontage? I'm sure they would. Uh, but, you know, that wasn't an option for me. If we want to keep Chick-fil-A, and which brings up another subject, Aldi wants to be there because Chick-fil-A is there bringing in traffic. Sure. So if you take out Chick-fil-A, you tell them they can't have the frontage, well, Aldi also leaves. So more than likely. Can I say that 100% for sure? No. But you know, that's the reason they approached us and wanted to be at our site is because they see this as a redevelopment opportunity where traffic is going to be driven into the site. So they want to be there. Sure. So unfortunately, I can't really switch them. Uh, if Chick-fil-A doesn't get it, get the frontage, then they're just not going. I understand. Uh, so. Courtney, would you bring that drawing back up of the proposed? Me? The proposed Chick-fil-A? The proposed, the whole, um, oh. you know, of the um, Chick-fil-A and the Aldi and... Uh, that, that, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, how about that one entrance, that north entrance that we talked about coming off of travel, being so close, right. coming in? You know, I, I, I just foresee not only a problem of cars coming in there and then coming down through the parking lot waiting to get into the um, Queue. queuing lanes, you know, for ordering. Then you got the cars coming off Loop Road and you could actually, in theory, have cars coming off of Private yep. coming in that way. So you got cars sitting in three directions trying to get into into the queuing lanes. I, I mean, not... Not that that's a road problem, other than the the top one. You know, I don't know if we'll. You know, you do have more lanes than the other one for queuing. Has more space than the other ones. I just see some um, some potential potential problems, especially with that north right. entrance. I I wasn't sure if. It, it was, I'm going to assume and it was put there because they can come straight down that lane into the queuing. Sir, that's correct. So if it was put further back, then they got to weave through the parking lot, I guess, to get to the correct to the uh, drive throughs. And then also, there from the loop road or the cul de sac road, mm -hmm. you do have a stop sign, you know, right there. Granted, you know, maybe somebody can run the stop sign, but that is supposed to help control. I think you're right. I think there should be a stop sign coming from that other way as well, you know, to control and, you know, people take their turns, which hopefully they do to enter the drive through. Uh, the prototype that you see, you know, as Nelson pointed out, is their most recent prototype. Um, and 
you know, we try to work with what they give us. Uh, Nelson and Jackie and I, you know, try to work through and make suggestions of changes. Um, you know, and one of the points uh, that I think Nelson brought up, uh, that people are out in the parking lot, they're also on the outflow side. I think somebody pointed out, uh, Mr. Evans, I think you pointed out, uh, that they're trying to help people, like if, it, just like what you pointed out, if, if their order isn't ready, they're sent through to wait on their order. Uh, they want to keep people moving as quickly as possible, and that's also the reason that their stores enlarge the kitchen. I think one of the questions was uh, seating. Uh, how, how does that affect the seating? While I was waiting, I text the uh, Chick-fil-A uh, people to ask them about seating compared to the California store. So they said it's really operator dependent, but they expect the seating would be pretty much the same. Even though the kitchen is larger, they try to arrange other things such as their aisles uh, to accommodate the seating. So, but it's really up to the operator. So can I tell you for sure that it's gonna be the exact same? No, but chances are it's gonna be pretty close to the way it is at the California store. Does, is this store in square footage size about the same yes, size sir. as the Cal? Yes. So in, but so much they can do to that kitchen. I mean, uh, okay. Yeah, their clientele is going to be more drive-in than in, to mm -hmm. eat in by, by a lot. Uh, Which, more drive-in? Yeah, yeah, more drive. I mean, you know, the in, in, you know, California is a good example. You know, you can have people queued up in California everywhere and go, go inside, and there'll be a half a dozen people inside. You're right. Most people are trying to get, they're on their way someplace else, everybody's in a big hurry, and they don't want to eat inside. And so a lot of these restaurants are doing the very same thing. They're drive-ins, they're accommodating people, more people through drive-in, and that's what I was saying there. They need to get these people through these these aisles, and the only way they can do that, especially if they have a, a problem, is to move them out into the parking lot right. and get them get them out of the queue so that so it doesn't doesn't create a problem, a bottleneck. Place so. to move them. Right. Let me ask you one more question. Yes, sir. Then I'll be stop bothering you. Um, we talked about a couple things that you said you'd be glad to look into. Just from my point of view, that doesn't satisfy. The fact that it may be something, and I'm only speaking for myself, I don't know about the rest of the board, that I would want. If this went to a vote and we put the um, conditions of diesel lane, roundabout, is that something that, um, I mean, we could do that anyway. I'm just asking, is that something that you would feel comfortable with and I know if the state highway comes back and says you can't do that then I'm not sure if they'd have to come back here since it was a condition of the motion or or, or what but I mean I, I Go ahead. So just a couple things. I mean, I think that anything like that would have to be absolutely subject to state highway approval um, so that, you know, in fairness to the developer who's working in good faith with you, he, he doesn't have to continue to come back. Um, but what I would also point out to you of what you've heard Mr. Rosemore say, and he's been before you before, um, he was before you um, recently, is what you've heard him say is that he is redeveloping and he's going to obviously be before you again in the future. Um, and if I know uh, planning commissions, you all tend to have long memories. So I think what he's proffering to you is that I'll, I'll work in good faith with you to explore these items, both on my end, with your county um, department, with Lugum, and with um, the State Highway um, Association. And I think that you, as Mr. Um, Rosemore, comes forward with other projects, are certainly going to remember whether or not he worked in good faith with you. Well, I, so I'm sorry. I, you know, sometimes the person speaking he thinks he knows more than his attorney should probably shut the hell up. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and speak anyway. Um, so I think in one of our previous planning commissions, you asked, uh, would we make a change? Do some improvement, I don't remember which one, but you conditioned it, you qualified it, and said, if permitted by State Highway, and the right-of-way is there, you know, because if somebody else owns that right-of-way, and they 
say, well, I'm not gonna sell it to you. I, you know, that's, you're trapped. You can't do anything with that. But, you know, I give you my word, you know, that I'm gonna do everything that I possibly can, and you can make it conditioned, you know, put in the deceleration lane, putting in that loop road, and qualified based on if you have the right of way and, and <coughs> uh, obtain the state highway approval. So, and that I would be willing to accept. Well, and what I would say is, as we said, the subject, the decel lane on the state highway approval, but I don't know if you wanna say a roundabout or some form of a traffic, and, and I'm just qualifying because um, he's gotta explore. It may be a roundabout, maybe there's another solution, and again, it's subject um, to the constraints of right of way and the ability to design it. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. Point taken. I'm sorry. What no, I say that? hey, that's that's. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I and the other thing I just want to point out on that, I think that Mr. Rosemore's demonstrated, for example, the island that was discussed, that was that he is very responsive to comments that he hears from the commission and also that he hears from the community because that um, change to the design was specifically in response, if I recall, to comments that were raised by the community as he was working through the process. Correct. Let me ask one more question. Yes, sir. I don't know if it's to Mr. Um, Rosemore or the, um, well, of course, nobody from the state here. We do have, have the county. Um, I wonder how long, I'm not trying to hold anything up. Just wondering how long it would take to get an answer back. I mean, to, to me, especially that D cell lane is a very important part that I feel was overlooked in this project by somebody, I'm not putting blame on the developer. But I think that's a very important part of, you know, having traffic going from one day a week to seven days a week, and everybody kind of knows the market's been there for 60 years or something, so Saturday mornings you're gonna have some traffic slowing down and, and, and going in there. But, you know, with this every day, you know, I feel that there's going to be plenty of cars turning there. The estimate was for 40% of the traffic's coming from the south and 60 coming from the north. I don't know how we ever get to that, but irregardless, it's going to be a lot of cars there. So I was just wondering how long it typically takes to get an answer from the state or um, how long would it take to, not, not you, just probably from Mr. Rosemar, how much would it take to check the spaces, you know, back around where we're at, where I was thinking that a roundabout may be helpful to this project and, and the safety of the project and the egress around there. Um, either from the county, I'm not sure if the county has any on that Henry Lane, who's, that's probably yours, or the Golden Beach Developments also. So uh, seems to me like that, I guess you would have to, if you have all the easements there, I mean, I've seen roundabouts of multiple different sizes, small, large, two lane, one lane. You know, I'm just was thinking, did we have an estimate if we could, not that we want to hold you up, but I mean, if after testimony, I mean, I don't know if we're going to get done anyway, if we wanted to table it for a time and see if we could get, and it's just me speaking, I'm not speaking for anybody else, would like them a few things Answer. My thought would be that if you condition it the way you did, that would take care of it because Mr. Rosemore is committed that if he, if the state gives him permission to put that D cell lane in, then that's what he's going to do. So I think your condition would allow it to move forward um, through to the next step. And remember that this is concept, so there are, um, you know, still approvals and work to be done to get to final site plan. Okay. A um, couple questions, and this might, Ms. Chandler might have to kick in on this. Um, you have the traveler in the back street interse intersection that's back in there that Mr. Van Kirk was talking about, um, but also out front. There was never, I mean, we've talked about a lot of uh, changes that the state is looking into, hasn't given any input back on it and all that. 
the the dreaded three words that I don't like in fee in lieu fee in lieu has not been discussed with any of this. I mean, because this um, we were talking about the fixing of a. Uh, Golden Beach Road and five, I'll say on the east side, on on the northbound lane. Um, and it might be seven or more years before the liquor store lease comes up. Seven years is a long time, bad, bad intersection. You know, it, it doesn't need any more added to it. Though um, the intersection, the new one uh, that will be put in has been definitely needed for a long time, but you still have a, a, a major thoroughfare right through there. Um, the state should have put that, you shouldn't have had to worry about that island. The state should have put that island in a long time ago to stop people from flying down that side of the road. There's there's a few places in the county where um, when I go to work in the morning, I have to take take a, a good look before I go right to turn right onto, a, onto Chancellor's Run Road because they fly from Walmart all the way down the side. Uh, those islands should be put in in a lot of places and the state should uh, should pick up on, on that. Um, but I'd feel, I feel a lot more comfortable knowing that the state was gonna do this. I know we're at concept, but, but that's our job to make this concept. You know, it, it shouldn't have to be hard after it leaves us. We shouldn't have to worry about, oh, if the state, suppose they tweak it, suppose they don't go with what they, what was proposed tonight, but then they say, well, they tweak it. Well, it might have an impact on one board member that might not vote f for or against, you know, either way. Uh, we deal in facts. We need those facts. Uh, sometimes we, we don't like how long it takes. And uh, I know no developer likes dealing with the state <laughs> highway administration because they hold you all up. I mean, it's our job to make, you know, you're a landowner. You want to develop this. You shouldn't have to jump through hoops, you know, with the highway in order to um, get something built. I mean, we could give you an answer quick if we had state highway, you know, uh, either here or, um, I mean, there's only so much Mr. Gotch can answer. Um, let's see, I'm, good evening, Mr. Gotch. I saw you, you come into the room, the, the director of Department of Public Works and Transportation. But, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of those facts that we need to make a good decision. You look at all these people out here. I know what they're here to say tonight. I mean, I can pretty well guess. I don't know. Well, I don't know what they're going to say. Want, do you want me to guess? I think they're all here in support. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wishful thinking, but, you know, there probably are some, but there probably aren't, you know, and I mean, not a fortune we, teller. We, we, we've, tell. um, <laughs> we've, we've dealt with projects in this area. Um, it is a very compressed area. I mean, you have stretches to 235 where you're coming up the road. All of a sudden, you're not coming up the road anymore. You, you're, you're compressed down, and it all just bunches right in on there. And, you know, these people have lived there their lives, and they're coming out these roads, and we got to make sure that, you know, they're, they're, they own as much of this land. Right. Not the land personal, you know what I mean. The right to move in and out of their, their developments and such like that as anybody else. So I can help with the Golden Beach in terms of right of way. You know, that's something I can dedicate as right of way to allow for that turn lane. You know, more than that, you know, I mean, so when the land is available, you know, and no longer bound by a lease obligation, mm -hmm. that right of way is there. So, yeah. well, the I problem mean, that, being with that is the length of the lease. I mean, oh, if well, you start, I mean, you you could be in a real in a, in a beautiful world. You know, you start your project and in a year, and you have it there. You know, there's six more years of a bad corner right there that doesn't need any more right. anything else. I mean, been some horrific car accidents right there on that corner. Um, if you have a little thing on your phone that tells you that there's accidents, that 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 intersection comes up a lot. Right. You know, be it a bad be it a bad accident or a slight accident it still holds up traffic things happen um which that's no fault of yours which but hopefully I mean, travel lane with the new traffic light will also help yeah. you know slow down traffic through there okay all right anything else for i, I just one thing for mr mr so rosemore um you said that this is a new uh, design concept for Chick-fil-A that they're working with. I would feel comfortable if you tried to reach, reach out to them again, go back, and, and make sure they understand the 
the posted speed limit and what people are actually doing on five and that turn onto the private road and then the turn into their, I know that that was outside of uh, Ms. Chandler's jurisdiction because it's, it's more the, the access of the property itself. I, I'm, I just have some concerns that, um, you know, it's going to be taken very fast and that there may be some, some you know, some accidents in that area. So just, you know, to check with them and realize that, you know, here's a plan that, you know, you guys think works. Our planning board, you know, commission it has some concerns about, you know, is this a safe traffic movement? And I'm not a traffic expert, so it's not, you know, for me to say, but just knowing how people go on there, I just feel that's the one turning movement that concerns me the most about entering the property. Um, you know, and, and whether it's they're taking it too fast and then they're crashing into cars that are queued up to leave Traveler's Lane um, or, um, you know, or they, they take it and they're, they're in the shrubbery of the, of the property that you just planted, you know, um, that's that's just something there that uh, seems to be the biggest concern. Because compared to all the other projects we hear here, Chick-fil-A, I think, is very unique. And we all know that because of the uh, fanatic support they get from people and that people who are willing to wait in lines for a long time. Um, I've had their ch chicken before. It's pretty good. I don't frequent their businesses because I just, I'm not a patient person. And and the lines and the queuing, um, and I drive a pickup truck and a lot of times it's a personal safety concern that I'm out in a travel lane, you know, queuing up to try to, to get some fast food and I just say, you know, it's not worth it for me. So um, that's, that's my biggest concern about this. Other than that, you know, so yeah, I would just you know I'm not asking. I'm just saying if you could just yeah to check with them and and just you know, explain that our concerns about that and that maybe there's um, make sure that they're comfortable with the the liability of that of that turn okay. off off the major state route. Yes, ma'am. Just had one thought, and I you can't tell them unless you reconfigure, and that is the ingress and the egress to Chick Fil A. You know where you have it when you come off. When you come, come into it. Come up Loop Road. Yeah, come up Loop Road. Microphone. Take your right. Come on down. Can you move it? <laughs> I know. It seems to me if you, that I'm seems to be one of the biggest, that seems to be the biggest <laughs> issue is, I mean, of mine, that is the backup that that could cause. So if you sw if you turn that entrance around, your invert I mean invert the the. Speaking to a microphone there. I'm trying to describe this because I'm looking at it, but I can't. Because <laughs> so, you can't see me touching it. If you take it, take that horseshoe. Let's just say you see the horseshoe you've got going. Uh huh. If you turned it upside down. And move it up here. You're moving, you're moving the entrance down, and moving the three lanes to the inner corridor. Yeah. <clears throat> moving. Instead of coming in on the where where it says parcel eight, you have three lanes right there beside the P and parcel. She's talking about taking it and flipping it to the other side. Oh, like this. Everybody yeah. drives. Putting the parking here. And oh, the, the store parking the other. down is below. Is that right? Is that what I understand you? Yeah. If you came here, I would show you uh, what I mean. Come here. Yeah. Come here. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're talking about flipping. Get yeah, her to come over so she can do it with her <laughs> mouse. Still can't see, see this right yes. here? Yes, ma'am. Be up top here, and these entrances would be down here. So you would have to, if it came. You don't have any road came, down there. The, the traffic would go this way. It's not what I thought. I don't know. I figured that I think out. The parking, <laughs> the parking would be an issue if if you flipped it upside down. Because you got the parking. Yeah. Right yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Mm 
Just a thought, guys. Like, <laughs> like what we're all here for? Any, any other That's questions? Why they Does anybody else have any questions? Why they Mr. pay you the big money? That's right. Uh, Does anybody else have any? Down here. Does the, anybody have any more questions of Mr. Rosemore while he's here? Not right now. Uh -huh. Okay. Because then it would be feasible. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Ms. Greer, anything else that y'all want to put out before? I, now, let, let me just, and if I'm saying anything wrong, I'll have my main man, Joe Van Kirk, right here to straighten me out. Um, after we listen to you, and then you've heard some concerns of ours, we're going to come to the point uh, after public testimony uh, where we would go over the case. Now, if there is any consideration by the applicant that they want to, uh, and if the board insists on uh, some information that we didn't get tonight and we'd like before we do it, um, we would continue it. If we did continue it and new information came um, before us tonight, I would open it back up to public testimony again the next time because any time new information uh, is brought before the citizens or whoever is in the audience tonight that has questions, um, I would open that back up so that they could ask more, more questions. So would it take a little longer? Yeah. Would it answer more questions? Yes. So I just... That's my personal view of where things might might go, but I just wanted to give you that little bit of a heads up, okay? Thank you very much. I appreciate that insight. Okay. And um, what I would like to do, because I knew, do know that you have public here that have been sitting here anxiously yes, waiting to testify, is to allow the public to testify this evening. And then I would like the opportunity to um, sum up and address some of the points of consistency with the comp plan and the other um, findings that you have to make. And meanwhile, while the public is uh, testifying, I will be sure to consult with my client. Okay, because like I say, if uh, I don't want to close it out afterwards, um, well, we'll just find out what happens, see what the board says. I just want to give you a, well, a scenario of what might happen. And might not. <laughs> might not. You know. Okay. At this time, we will open up to public testimony. I have a list of names on a sign-in sheet. I also have a, a sign-in sheet for people that I guess just wanted to make sure that they were on here for information that might come forth. I will go through the list of um, for public testimony that as the sign-in sheet goes, and then if anybody else wants to afterwards, uh, just raise your hand. I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna ask everybody that comes up if they were sworn in, and. Um, then if you weren't or you came late or for whatever reason, Mr. Gotch, if I have to, remind me, if I have to ask you a question tonight, I have to swear you in before you come up. Um, don't, don't let me forget. We'll make sure everything is right tonight. Okay, so with that being said, uh, first person on the list tonight was Mr. Dale Antosh. If you come up to the microphone, give us your name and address, please. Hello, I'm uh, Dale Antosh. I'm uh, president of the Golden Beach Civic Association. I've spoke before you before, the Royal Farms. Good to see you all again. Mr. Antosh, you can, if you're representing your um, all your constituents down there, you can have five minutes. Well, thank you. Yep. Okay. I was gonna ask for 20, but that's okay. Well, that's right. <laughs> we, come, we come to a firm in the middle there, five minutes. I'm not sure I actually represent all 1,200 lots in Golden Beach, but uh, as I say, I'm head of Civic Association. We've had meetings, we've discussed the following with the developer, I've talked back and forth with them, and our community is excited about the Royal Farms and the Starbucks which and the Chipotle, which you all have approved. General feeling is the same with this project, especially getting a new grocery store. Food Lion being the only grocery store leaves no other choice and the prices have gotten ridiculous. Wanna buy some eggs for $8? We understand that the old McKay's will be a shoppers and that will also help. I, will all, I am always available for comments and concerns and I have not heard anything from the community that was unfavorable for this project except for the same things that we're discussing tonight and that is the congestion. Uh, just like the Royal Farms, 
this is not truly a thing that I think that will generate more traffic. It will generate more traffic in that area turning in and out, of course. But I don't think anybody's gonna come from Crofton to come down here to our Chick-fil-A or whatever. You know, I'm just being silly. But it's not like Disney World, which is a destination people come from all over. So we only have to be concerned with a lot of the people that live in this what, five, 10 mile circle who are here anyway, and let's see if we could figure out a way to get them in and out and get fed. Makes sense to me. Uh, on this particular plan here, I looked at it and I was the one that came up with this idea that said, you know, if you put an island there, it would slow those people down that you talked about that fly down the right-hand lane. And I'm sure most of you remember that horrific accident that was at Golden Beach Road. My thoughts were, is there anybody listening that we could put that island? That means if you're coming down the right lane, you have to turn right. How about another one up at the Chipotle? You have to turn right. And another one up at... Burger King, you have to turn right. And that will eliminate the people going straight down that way. I know that's not why we're here, but that island, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Rosemore, is very receptive to people talking to him. And he said, you know, that's a great idea. And sure enough, on this plan, first time we've seen it, the island was there. So thank you, sir. You do listen to the community as you said you did. We also talked I said, you know those three lanes going in? When it backs up, you know, we want them to go back straight across. We've talked about that a bunch of times. Originally, that was over more, and if, if it backed up, you hit an island. He also moved that over. After looking tonight, I'm saying, I got even a better idea, maybe. Why don't we just close that road right there where the three are going in? Close it there, go up, keep going up, and line it up with the road going into the Aldi. So now, if you're coming down the road, and also close that one up at the cul-de-sac cul at the very top, you have to come down, you have to come in at the Aldi, and instead of turning into the Aldi, you turn into the parking lot, and you can go and loop all the way around, and you'll have a lot more room for cars. That will also create space in the front of the Chick-fil-A for what you talked about. I ordered my food, it's not quite ready. I come out, I turn to the front, it will create extra spaces there. Now, yes, you'll have to move those six islands, maybe turn them around the other way or whatever, but I don't think that eliminates any parking spots. What it does do, it creates a straight shot twice the length of what the three lanes are, if you go all the way back to where that entrance is, coming off of Travel Lane or whatever that's called. Just a thought. So if you close that one there and you move the one on the side up to maybe line up, you're gonna have a lot longer line going out before it starts backing up with the side road. Just a thought. I also asked some other questions and he respond. He responded. I said, what's gonna happen to this big white space down in the bottom right? There are buildings there. He said, well, they're all going away. We're getting rid of the farmer's market in, in our square. And he says, that may be a restaurant pad someday that they will put it out there and say, hey, we've got a pad. How about a Applebee's? How about a whatever, whatever? We've been hollering for that for years and years and never knew what the problem was, everyone always told us, well, it's lack of sewer. We don't have sewer. He says, I've, I've got enough sewer to take care of that. I've got three ponds out behind, and that's the sewage treatment plant. So good for us. We actually may be here someday looking to approve. How about a Texas Roadhouse? How about a, well, there is none. Mr. Anton. Place across the street. That's going away, St. Mary's Landing. Your, your time's up if you want to wrap up. Oh, no, you said you gave me 20 minutes. No, I didn't. I said I'd give you five. <laughs> okay, and also that uh, road coming in, yes, that definitely needs its own lane coming in. It's been like that for years. Very good man to work with, and he said he'll do anything that is necessary to get this project underway. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have questions of Mr. Antosh? Thank you, sir. Okay, 
Joseph Ridgel. And I did swear you in, correct, sir? Yes, sir. I'm Joe Ridgel. I lived in the county my whole life. Um, I'm concerned about the traffic and the overwhelming um, watershed that's going to be from this project. Um, as a county citizen, I live in Country Lakes. We travel, we don't go to Lexington Park, period. <laughs> we don't go to Charlotte Hall, period. We shop in King George. So I'm totally against this crap. I'm sorry. But to me, I don't want none of it. <clears throat> Just my opinion, and I know there's a lot of people in Country Lakes that don't want none of it. So that's all I gotta say. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Okay, Josh Guy. <coughs> Josh, we did swear you in, correct? Of course you did. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Name and address, please. Sure, Josh Guy, 39160 Guy Family Way. You guys are in for a treat because I'm a little sleep deprived. I've been sitting back here for an hour or two. Um, but my main concern is with the, um, the indoor vendors at the farmer's market. Uh, many are elderly and uh, most have been there for 20 plus years. And I'd like to see a commitment from the developers to allowing the current longtime vendors uh, first opportunity in renting a space in the relocated market. The market has provided a source of tourism for the county and has provided local vendors a chance to sell their goods for 80 years. And I also would like to know whether the proposed buildings for the farmer's market are open space or if they are enclosed buildings. I, I don't recall that that was ever brought up. So uh, those are my concerns. I'd also like to submit to the chairman, this was a petition that went around with over 400 uh, signatures in opposition to the project and the relocation of the farmer's market, if I may. Okay, you can give that to staff here. Thank, Thank you, Courtney. And that'll be it. Okay, any questions, Mr. Guy? Thank you, Josh. Okay, Carl Ward. Uh, good evening, and thank you for letting me speak. My name is Carl Ward. My address is 37790 Indian Creek in Charlotte Hall. And I came here, I'm concerned about the infrastructure for all this work. The water, the sewer, and we've already dealt in on the highway. Uh, can anyone tell me where that water and sewer is coming from and going to? We can get that answered for you, sir. I was wondering because I live in the Indian Creek subdivision, which is right behind Tractor Supply. Mm -hmm. And I've heard you bring up uh, Triangle Road. That's as deadly as Route 5, or as far as number of accidents. That has multiple um, fast foods, has a small shopping center, has food line. Food line is that particular one is the largest food line in their whole chain as far as profit making. <clears throat> that is a very, very busy store. You, <coughs> Triangle Road, <coughs> shop. There's potholes in there. Every week there's a new one. They'll fill it up, there's another one. You talk about the end of Henry Lane, you go out to the other end, you can sit there five or 10 minutes to get on to Golden Beach Road. Triangle Road's the same way. And when you go out, you're taking your life in your hands. I'm asking, though, the primary reason is because I live in Indian Creek subdivision. It's approximately 72 homes in there where people, most of us are retired or on the doorstep to retiring. And we're concerned that this new development is gonna in some way impact our septic tanks, our wells and all, that we'll be forced to go in and change something we cannot afford. We're living from month to month on fixed incomes. And you talk about Route 5, come up there on a weekend. I invite any of you, 
and just try driving around there now. You know, I, I, I hope you would. Before you make any big decisions, I hope you just take and look at it. I've been there for 42 years. I came down here because I fell in love with St. Mary's County. But I tell you, the luster's starting to wear off. You know, I know these gentlemen are out there and they're trying to make an income, they're trying to do something. But I was told at one time, if they put homes in there and all down on Golden Beach Road, they could cap, make us cap off our wells, close our septic tanks and make us hook up to this. Is any of that true? You know, I don't hear any answers, but is any of it true that they can force us to do that? Well, we can't answer that question for you, I don't believe. You know, I'd like to, but I mean, we have some experts. Well, can you shake your head up and down or back and forth if you can't answer? <laughs> you know, I just need to know. Well, I'm, I'm talking on behalf of a lot of people in my subdivision. Okay. okay. Well, we're going to try to get some of those questions answered for you. Though. Well, I thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Yes, sir. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, I think we have a METCOM rep here. That yeah, we'll I was going to be able to answer that after. I was going to do. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Done. Go ahead and come up, dear. Anna Wells. Period. I can't make them all. No. Uh, yes, I'm Anna Wells with METCOM. Um, so the water in this area, there is already water uh, service on this lot. Um, I believe that the concept plan will include additional line for water to um, basically loop the system better, so make it better for maintenance, and it'll add additional fire hydrants. Um, it shouldn't have any impact on the rest of the system for the water in this area. The sewer uh, service is private, so unfortunately I can't comment on that, so. Okay, but now the, the water, you say, it, does it do just this development, or does it do, I'll say, up there where, where these folks live, up by where McKay's was and all that? How far does this water? Um, yeah, it does follow um, Route 5 up north towards that area. I, I don't know exactly where it stops. Um, okay. Uh, my question is. You have to, call, if you want, you got to come up to the microphone. I'm sorry. Thank you. It's, it's important. My question is, will I be allowed to keep my well, to keep my septic? I have a great investment in it. When I bought the house, they didn't give me a piece of paper saying, oh, if your well or your septic goes bad, your neighbor's going to have to pay for it. You know, if they're going to do this building, they should have to pay for their own infrastructure. It should not come back on my shoulders and my neighbors. No, it, and, and I don't believe it is. I've, I have heard in past projects before that the county doesn't require you to, to hook up to any, I'll say, county-owned system. Well, they were discussing putting a housing development on Golden Beach Road, and it was brought up that we're going to put a sewer through your neighborhood in order to help pay for it, and you're going to be hooked onto it. Well, you would have to take, you can call down to METCOM to find out that. I mean, I don't want to quote anything, but we were told in past projects, mind you, not, not this one, but uh, that the county would not require you to, uh, to hook into a system as long as your system is, is active and working. If you were, your, especially your sewer system were to fail, they, if, and there is uh, county sewage in front of your, or within reach of your house, or and or a neighborhood, then they would require you then to, to hook into it. I can understand that. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Howard. Merle. It, yeah, so it, my experience mm -hmm. with regard to Medcom, I live in Tall Timbers, and in Tall Timbers years ago, everybody's se septic system was failing. So the federal government ran a line from you know, 249 all the way to Piney Point, and along the way, uh, they made hookup available as they, as they went down the line. Now, you had a choice. You didn't have to hook up. Here, here it is. You have a grinder pump. Uh, we're going to put the grinder pump in the ground, and we're going to be responsible for that. You're going to be responsible for the grinder pump to your home. That was the expense. Your choice. Hook up or don't hook up. Here's the downside. Everybody's systems were failing. If you had thrown those little pink pills in the toilet and flushed, the entire second district would turn pink <laughs> because of the water levels. So you didn't have to hook up, but here's your alternative. If you don't hook up, if you choose not to, it's up to you and your system's working, 
And there are people along 249 right now that are still using their same systems. They, they continue to use them. If it fails and you can't get a new perk or you can't get a mound system perk, um, you're gonna wind up having, and, and the health department condemns your system, you're gonna have to wind up with something called pump and haul. And that requires, that's a 1500 gallon tank and then you get to pump it out whenever you need to pump it out. And 1,500 gallons sounds like a lot until you have a family of a couple or three, and it's just not. Um, my experience, and since I've been here, I don't ever require, never ever heard that someone forced anybody to hook up to anything. I think they make available, you know? And it's not Medcom's job to run pipes into the hinterlands. Uh, land use and growth management determines where development will go and then it reaches out to Metcom and gives Metcom's, I'm gonna call them marching orders, for, for the infrastructure. And that's really how it, how it goes. But from my, from my perspective, if it weren't for Metcom okay. and being given the opportunity to do one or the other, then I would be on pump and haul. Uh, there's just no way that our land would be able to uh, sustain a, a, a system. But I don't, I've never heard of anything, you know, where Metcom would expand the system, for example. They'll make it available if it goes past your place, but they're not gonna make you hook up. Okay. Um, That's a quick one. Hmm? Is there one more question? <laughs> Mr. Ward, you're hurting me now. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to the next person. Just bear with me a second. Because if I let everybody get a second question tonight, we're going to double it up. Yeah. Um, Julianne Thorne. Julianne, I'm sorry, dear. Okay. I thought I was doing it wrong. No, you're fine. Okay. Could you give us your name and address, please? J U L E. Pull that. There you go. J U L E. Thorne. Three zero six eight three Bighorn Court. Okay. Go ahead. So. The northern part of the section of St. Mary's County is the gateway to the county. It's the welcome for everybody coming in from the north. And what do you see? Gas stations, fast food, traffic lights, congestion, crowded roads that can't be expanded because the businesses that are there are built right up to the roadway. So you can expand the roads, but yet people come to our county because they're leaving those northern counties because of all the congestion and traffic and crime. I'm gonna have to talk about that. So this Chick-fil-A that's coming, I don't see, if, if I might be wrong, is there a road around the building for first responders to get to the building? I don't seem to see that. I just see three lines of traffic going down to two. So think about that. You need a road for your first responders to get to that building. That loop road, all that I see that's doing is throwing traffic <coughs> off the main road to come to that building, but yet now you're gonna have four ways for people to try to get into those fast food lanes. And all that's gonna do is cause anger because society now is a whiff them. What's in it for me? They're gonna to try to get to that lane. So people aren't gonna be courteous. You think they are, but they're not. And the retail pad, I'm not quite sure <coughs> why we in the northern section needs another retail pad of these small stores. Because if I'm not mistaken, <coughs> on the South by Lane, there's property over there that has a sign now for retail pads over there. So I just feel that you guys are just trying to develop the northern section in an area that there isn't any room to do that. I understand it's zoned, and I understand developers need to make their money and, and have a living. But come on, give the northern a section a break. We're just so congested, there's nowhere to expand these roads. Yes, they're dangerous, 
55 through there? Really? Those who don't live up there? You need to come up there throughout the day, throughout the week, and see how congested those roads are. People don't obey the signs, whether you have the lanes, the islands on that lane going south, I mean going northbound, yeah, those are needed. Because you cross Route 6, don't go on that shoulder because you don't know who's gonna come up behind you. So again, in summary, think about this. I don't think that that northern section, we can't stand much more, I understand. It's zoned, but is it expandable? Is it sensible? Is it safe? Thank you. Any questions? Just a comment. Comment. So, Jewel, don't run don't, don't away. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't disagree with you. I would love to come south and, and see a great big sign that says, welcome to the town center of Charlotte Hall, a planned town center. But that's not what we have. We don't have that. We have a named town center, but we have no master plan for the town center. Mm -hmm. And that, that is on the backs of every planner and county commissioner since the 50s. We did a great job of naming all these places but we didn't take the time of putting together master plans so we could share what we wanted. This county is completely reliant, completely reliant on developers. And, and, and a lot of people act as though developers have horns and that's really just not the, that's not the, the, not, not the case. We have a comprehensive plan that gives some general guidelines as to what people can or can't do, zoning can or can't do. And the fact of the matter is, a lot of people that own land within town centers and village centers, the landowners, don't want any part of it. They don't want any part of master planning because it's their land. They want to do what they want to do with it. So, and, and maybe, maybe if you close your eyes, you may not like what Calvert looks like, but they have town centers. They all have a theme to their town centers. They all have rules, they have regulations. You can do this, you can do that, you can do other things. Uh, the building can look like this, certain fencing, you know, roadways and all the rest. Uh, we, don't, we simply don't have that. Um, and that's unfortunate. And it really puts it an onus on us trying to do the very best we can working with developers every, every single meeting. And it's not, when you say you guys, it's not us guys. <laughs> it's, we're, we're the planning commission, that's true. And what we do is look at the comprehensive plan, those things that we're given, and try to make sure that what's coming before us uh, is, is consistent with, with that comprehensive plan. We're getting ready to rewrite it. There's an opportunity for you, Jewel, when you have a little extra time. Um, there'll be times where you can come and make comments to that. Zoning will come after that, where you physically, are going to determine what happens with it within that within when those within those areas. Uh, what you might want to do is create a, a, a get a bunch of people together and put a little pressure on our on the powers to be to create master planning. Um, we has have a not there's a lot of us that would like it. Uh, the pushback has been it's expensive. It does cost money, and it has there's a certain amount of buy-in from landowners. We were able to do it in Callaway. Got it. Went to the planning commission. It was approved. It went to the commissioners, not these commissioners. Some years back, it was turned down. The threat of a, more, a, a building moratorium caused that to stop. I have a copy of it. It was extremely well written for what a village center might look like. And so I don't disagree with you. I think it'd be wonderful if, if we could say to this developer, you're welcome. Come in, this is what we expect. This is what we want. But we don't, we don't, have, a, we don't have an opportunity to do that. Uh, because we don't have anything in place. We don't have any guidelines specifically for them for a master plan. So it's not that, we w it's not that I wouldn't want to do it. I'm speaking for me. It's not that I wouldn't want that to happen, but the fact of the matter is that's just not where we are now. Um, and so we rely on developers. We ask them to proffer certain things. We ask them to proffer deacceleration lanes. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to go to a uh, to a, a developer and say, oh, and by the way, if you put that in, if, uh, you know, I think if you put that in, I might want to vote for that, because that's called extortion. <laughs> I can't do that. We can have discussions. We can make uh, have observations. The developer wants wants to do. Most developers want to do the right thing. They don't want a bad project. I mean, they they want a project where people will come, feel safe. 
And I think it's important for people to understand exactly what the mitigation process is. What is, what is a developer's responsibility with regard to mitigation? And part, one of it's, it's, it's gotta be safe. But in, in these cases, most of these intersections are, are, that are failing, that are below, 24 and 235 is a good example. That intersection built by the state was an E the day it opened. It remains an E. And at this point, all you can do if you're trying to develop anything is to mitigate your impact on that, on that intersection. That's what the requirement is. And if you can't do it there, you gotta find some other place to do it, uh, or try to do it. So up here, we can only do so much. Um, it's frustrating for citizens to see these things come forward because it's not what they might want. Um, and you know, it may not be what I would want but we have to deal with the, with the cards that are dealt with. And I understand right. that and I respect that. Yeah. But in the Northern County, again, when the county first started, and like you said, back when they did this master plan, they really didn't know what that concept meant and what was gonna come in the future. But there is no master plan. But you've <laughs> That's got the this. problem. But okay, but what I'm trying to say is, look in the Northern section, look at that area from the county line to even 235, you're limited on how much you can put in that area mm -hmm. and the infrastructure is there to support it. Well then you, you, what you need to do is come forward and help out with the rezoning. And so when we do rezoning and then someone decides that they don't want this particular property to be rezoned in a certain way, and they don't own it. If you want to control a piece of property, you have a very good way of doing that, buy it. And when I say that, people get get very, very upset. But that's, that's the, the answer. If you, don't, if you love that tree, and you've always loved that tree, and someone's standing there with a chainsaw, and they're gonna cut it down, it's their tree. There's nothing I can do about that, or you can do about it, unless you buy the property. Okay. It may not be right, it may be a, mor a moral dilemma, but it's the, just the long and the short of it. It's, you know, sometimes this can be really ugly up this way. <laughs> Oh. trying to do that. I think we're getting past where yeah. we're supposed yeah, anyway. to be. Okay, just one more thing. When you guys put up hearing signs, don't put them up on a 12 by 12 paper that runs parallel with the road so I can't read it as I drive by because I don't want to pull off side the road because who knows might rear end me. But thank Courtney. you guys for your yeah. time. Don't thank put you. the signs up like that. Okay, is there anybody else that wants to speak tonight that's not, that's all the people I have on my um, sign up sheet except for uh, Eugene Shotwell has a question mark. But is there anybody else that wants to speak? Okay. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Could you give us your name and address, please? My name is Mike Bagley. I live at 3743 Handle Drive, which is in the Melanie Acres, right off of Oaks Road at the county line. I am for this project. I've lived down there for 45 years, and for the most part, there has not been much down there. Yes, there's new development. I've never met this gentleman, but he seems like he's really open to make the changes that are necessary. The farmer's market right now is not a pretty sight as you come into county. It, as you come in at northern end of the county, you don't have anything really nice. And I remember, oh, several, not several, a few years back, there was talk about Mechanicsville Elementary School. They wanted to redesign the front of it so when people came down here to live or come down here for a a vacation or whatever, you'd see a nice school, not a school that looked 50 years old. About seven or eight years ago, there was another meeting held at the library. I think Mr. Parlett, Mr. Fowler, somebody from the Burroughs family were talking about a back road from Golden Beach Road out to Route 6 with a couple of circles, roundabouts, which I don't know, you'd have to buy some of the land, but as far as what I've seen up here, yeah, triangle drive's a problem, but if he's willing to put a circle in there behind that nursery where that other road comes past the uh, back of the shopping center and comes out on Golden Beach, there does need to be some work at the intersection of Golden Beach and Triangle Drive where the Arby's is. You need to make a right turn so you can get the Golden Beach Road without waiting for somebody to make a left turn to go to Route 5. That, that needs to be fixed up, I agree there, and the little Triangle Drive from 
uh, Mount Wolf out the Golden Beach needs to be fixed too, but that's not part of his problem. He's further south, and uh, from what I've heard tonight, everything he has said, he seems to be open to making the changes. I love Aldi. My wife and I, we go to several different Aldis. The prices are so much better. That food line is just swamped now that McKay's is gone. Yes, we're going to get a shopper's, but we need three grocery stores. And as far as first responders getting in there, I'm with the fire department. I see no problems getting the Chick-fil-A, either with my department or mechanics. So we'll get there. <laughs> if we yeah. have to jump curbs <laughs> and it's in flames, we'll get there. But uh, that's all I have. Okay. Does anybody have any questions of Mr. Bagley? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? <sighs> um. Mr. Ward, I got a soft spot for you. You got one more question? Did you have one? One question. That, that's it. Just, just one. I'm, I'm almost breaking my rule, but you seem to have a concern. Kennedy, um, I was going to ask you. The gentleman here brought up Triangle Drive. That's what I was thinking about. You go to the other end. That's where I live. It's almost nightly. I lay in my bed, and I hear cars hit out there. You see it often on all day long around there, right where the Wawa, the Food Lion, and the Walgreens come together. That's as bad as Route 5. Well, any of that, and I heard someone speak about, well, we'll use Triangle Drive to get some of the traffic off 5. All that's going to do is back us up. You know, so just please take that into consideration. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Okay, is anybody else? I'm going to go ahead and close public testimony. Um, Ms. Greer. Do you want to um, go ahead and give your part now? As I said, the 10 o'clock hour is getting close. Uh, we can, we got two options. You can go ahead and do your thing within the board deliberation. If we run into a, a time factor and there's things that we want to um, have answered and things like that we're going to have to continue it then so it's it's we're, we're going to move as quickly as we can with the hope it. that you can deliberate and hopefully we've answered all your questions okay um, so we'll just move as quickly as we can um, mr. Orocho could you just very briefly answer the question regarding the water and sewer facilities serving the project uh, Ms. Wells correctly said the water is uh, available through METCOM in this area and goes, continues up north uh, on uh, Route 5. Um, the, uh, the sewer is a private system that's owned by the, the developer, uh, which has the capacity uh, for the proposed work. Uh, we provided the health department and uh, METCOM with a chart showing the, uh, the usage and what the demand is, and it meets uh, what the plant is rated at through MDE. It's all approved, and so it's satisfactory. So with that, I would just really like to briefly touch upon the findings. Um, the one thing we haven't touched upon uh, specifically, although it's been referenced, and I appreciate the comments and the understanding of this planning commission, is consistency with the comp plan. As I indicated to you when I first sat down, this is exactly what your comprehensive plan calls for. The property is located in the Charlotte Hall Town Center, which is zone TMX, and your comprehensive plan says that the county would like to see growth happen here and this type of growth. The other thing that your comp plan says, as I stated in the beginning, in chapters three and chapters four, is that it really wants to see, your comprehensive plan really wants to see the redevelopment of these types of parcels as opposed to extending onto undeveloped parcels. And when you look at the plan that um, this project is giving you, just a couple of points that I want to hit. You're going from zero stormwater management to meeting current stormwater management regulations, which as we know, the state of Maryland has some of the most stringent stormwater regulations um, in the country. And that's important because people often forget that that's one of the benefits of redevelopment is that you have the application of those stringent regulations. Your comprehensive plan talks about buffers and going green. Take a look at that plan and I want you to recall the picture 
picture of the front of where the farmer's market exists today. And if you look at the picture, you can see that this advances the goals of your comprehensive plan. You now have a better vista, completely consistent. You have a 65-foot buffer, which is completely consistent to improving your vista and streetscape associated with your um, town center. With respect to traffic, and I'm, I'm rushing because we have comprehensive plan, but we also have, um, well, let me just circle back, pedestrian circulation and pedestrian friendly. You heard about the internal sidewalks and connectivity of these parcels that is consistent with that. With respect to adequate public facilities, the record is replete and you have all of the review comments from the various agencies um, showing, the showing that there is adequate um, public facilities, but the big conversation tonight has been roads. You have the testimony of Jackie Chandler before you, whose testimony is not challenged, and Ms. Chandler clearly indicated that um, with the proposed mitigation, this project may meet adequate public facilities, and in fact, we are over mitigating. And the question I asked her is, with this project, is the road system, it's not perfect, trust me. It's not perfect, right? We would like it to be perfect. But the question is, has tra have we improved the situation? Is it better with this project or without? And without anything before Mr. Rosemore spoke, Ms. Um, Chandler's testimony is, again, unchallenged, that the situation improved that it was better with this project. Not perfect, not like that we want it to be, but it did improve the situation. But Mr. Rosamore, when, this, when the commission questioned him, showed exactly what he had committed to before, and that's in his investment in the community. I will commit, if you would like to commit me to commit to a D-cell lane subject to the approval of State Highway um, and the ability to do that, I will do that. I will commit to exploring a traffic traffic improvement internally, again, subject to the limitations of my leases, the right of way and the ability to design that. So he's gone a step further. Um, understandably, we would all like it to be perfect, but that that's not that's not, as you know, as each project and redevelopment comes through, you get those things. You don't get them all at once. With respect to promoting the health, safety, and welfare, um, again, you heard the testimony from the citizens, the desire for another grocery store, the desire um, for a Chick-fil-A, uh, which again is a community amenity going into um, item number five, and then again with respect to your chapter 62 design standards, the record is replete that it is consistent and there, that there have been no um, issues during the, the process and that the size, design, and scale is consistent with the surrounding community. So I've spoken very brief, very quickly, and hopefully um, have made my points. I mean, this is, this, is, this, is what, this is what your plan calls for. It's a good project. You have a good developer um, at the table, and we would seek your approval of the concept plant, again, understanding that um, we have till that there that this is the approval of a concept plan so that we can proceed to the next step thank you so much any questions okay I can, mr. Fanker I um <clears throat> I, I appreciate all that I really um To me, without having some questions answered, and I know Mr. Rosemore would do all he could to do them. I mean, we've worked with him on other projects. Now, I understand that. It's nothing that, that he wouldn't do that he said he would do, but I mean, just one point of the desal lane, could that be a deciding factor for some people? You know, if you get it or if you don't. To me, it's, a, it's an important part of the project. And like I say, I'm just speaking for myself. There's a you know, I think you're gonna have a lot of traffic that ends up on travel lane and goes up Henry to Triangle, whether the people want it or not. Um, I just think it's gonna 
be a lot easier than going back out um, onto onto five in a lot of cases, especially people that live there and know where all them roads are are to and from. So I think a traffic device there is really needed. Um, you know, I think all, all, all them roads back there work internally. You know, you've got triangle on both ends, it's the ward's end and, 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 and the other end. That's, it all, it all connects and, you know, people are gonna be going all, all different ways. Um, I don't think the people up there was done proper justice when the tractor supply was built. And I've brought this up numerous times. I suppose it had a traffic roundabout there. It's never been put in, I still don't know why. We heard from a couple directors, not, not Mr. Gotch, that uh, it, was, it was gonna be done this spring. Well, that was three springs ago. I don't know why it's not there. You know, it was supposed to have been part of the approval of, of the tractor supply. And that would help a great deal of not just the traffic that's going out to 235, but you know, slows down traffic on Triangle and, and that whole area, you know, there's a terrible hill there that if you go from Triangle across Mount Wolf, or I think it's Mount Wolf, whatever the road is, to get over to the Wawa, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible bump and slope. And I mean, I was there a couple weeks ago and somebody's front end, I could hear it bottomed out, you know, coming down from the Wawa, coming across the Triangle. It, it's, it just seems like that some of them roads could be improved a little better than what they are. That, that that should have been done. I think there should be something at Traveled and Henry, and I think there should be a desal lane. So, and I understand the developer's willing to do what he can do. But in, in my opinion, I would prefer to have some answers um, with that. So that's just um, all I'm gonna say about that. It's just my, my personal opinion. I agree with you on that. <clears throat> I know it was stated that um, it's going to improve the sites sight line on 230 for on uh, five there when when this comes there'll be a buffer and such but i used to like looking at the farmer's market and seeing what kind of fruit they had out on the stand on the road um and i think a lot of people up there i, I don't live up there i live close i live in hollywood but uh, i know my family would go up there at times and, and buy fruit and stuff. And I think even with the, the county having their own farmer's market down off of um, Thompson Corner Road, people are still going to go to those two vendors that, that do it. They've been there for years. I mean, they've been there a long time. Um, I, I know I call them the mum man is there. I mean, you go up there on a Saturday and try to buy a mum from that place, and it's, um, you know, it, it's busy. So there's going to be a lot of of activity going on not just out here on on the road itself but in the back and i would like to have those questions answered uh, by the developer you know I'm, I'm i'm leaning toward you know this is looking good but i, I need to know in the back is this going to be able to move how we're going to move these people they're still going to go to that farmer's market they're, they're, they're going to go back there even if they can't see it from from route five they're, they're going to go people been going to it for years it's like just like something you do it's like going to the store on the weekend well we're going to stop by the market um those those are my concerns mr evans yeah we when we're giving our packet we were the beneficiary of a, um, a memorandum that was requested of Mr. Hauser. And I don't want to put you on the spot, John, but I'm going to put you on the spot. So, um, and the memorandum has to do with APF. Four you know. hours, Mr. Evans, and you call me up here at 9.59. I, 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 I would have called you, but you are looking so comfortable. So, <laughs> oh, you all had to hear from your lawyer at some point tonight. Well, well you know, that's okay. And so, but we were talking about um, mitigation and those kinds of things, John. Yes, sir. And you wrote this very articulate paper with regard to mitigation. And I think it's, I think it would be helpful for the folks here to benefit from 
what you wrote with regard to mitigation. How that works. So what we had, Mr. Evans, is that we did have a request and it was noted, and it's been no surprise to anybody who knew this was in the radar, particularly with this planning commission's historic very great sensitivity towards traffic, that traffic was going to be of concern with this proposal. So what the county attorney's office did was generate this three-page memo just summarizing what our standards are for adequate public facilities, adequate public facilities being our catch-all terms for water, sewage, schools, but in this case, roads and traffic. And these will, um, these will relate to the collectors, these will relate to the public roads, this won't relate to the internal circulation, the queuing at the uh, Chick-fil-A itself. But what the comprehensive zoning ordinance essentially lays out, the standards that have to be met on adequate public facilities, as Ms. Chandler noted, ideally, all other things being equal, you would be looking for a level of service C, this being a town center in a commercial project. That would be the mark that is the minimum standard. But as Ms. Chandler correctly noted, the town center is a designated growth area. It is an area we want to encourage development in. So because of that, the consideration the comprehensive zoning ordinance gives to situations like that, 70.7.2.E, I think, uh, says that where we have town centers and development districts, other revitalization areas where we want to drive growth, are the words from the CZO, is that you are allowed to achieve less than the minimum level of service. We can do less than that level of service C if on balance the project will still leave development, leave the traffic situation better than it was without the development. So if you take into account the trips that the new development will generate, the conditions it will create, if the commissioners are convinced, if they think there's sufficient facts and evidence that the project will be ever so slightly better than it is right now when all said and done with the mitigation that's being offered, then the comprehensive zoning ordinance says in those cases, adequate public facilities, the standards for roads have been met. If it's just left ever so slightly better in these kinds of districts only. And then there was also a notation given on their footnote of about half dozen other projects where the same standard has been applied, a majority of them in Charlotte Hall as well. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I agree, I mean, I agree with everything you just said, but how do we, what happens if they can't leave it better than it was? So the requirement is, again, the language in 70.7.2.E states that it has to be an improvement. At the end of the day, the project, and I, Ms. Greer, I know, probably has read it inside and out as well. If there's any exception to what I have to say, I welcome it. But the way I read that ordinance of the code, which I quote in here, I believe, is that it has to be an improvement. If they can't create an improvement, slight improvement, but it still has to be an improvement, then as I read it, that standard, even that lax standard, is not met. That's the factual determination the Planning Commission has to make, that whether or not the offered improvements here, the mitigation that's been talked about, will in fact result in a net benefit at the end of the day. That's the decision you all have. That tonight, that's the problem. Right now, we've been presented many risks. And we've, we have talked about the mitigation of those risks. The developer has agreed that he will attempt, to the best of his ability, to correct as much as he can. But suppose he can't, after we approved it, with, the, with all this, but he has to A, B, C, D. If A and C don't happen, can he just continue? I mean, what happens? Does it come back here and I don't know what the process is. So I think if I'm understanding correctly, Mr. Robrecht, it, it sounds like at least in your estimation, speaking for yourself, that if the developer could do the improvements, not the three mitigation proposals that Ms. Chandler elaborated on that I think SHA has approved or a guarantee, but those plus the specific improvements the developer talked about tonight, the deceleration lane yeah. and the roundabout or other mitigations further down, not Henry Lane, but our traveled lane. Right. It's those last two that we're not certain about, which the developers promised to check on. Those are what would tip it for 
that's what you think you would need to find? Yes. So then I, I think my suggestion to you, if you put the question to me bluntly, is that a conditional approval based upon those uh, <clears throat> mitigation being met or being able to be performed, but with the language that the State Highway Administration, that it wouldn't have to be required if the um, State Highway Administration disallows it or disapproves of it, that I don't think would be sufficient in your estimation than the, what you've just given me to conclude that there would absolutely be a benefit. There would just be an uncertainty. And at that point, I would agree that in your one case, the scenario you just gave me, there's not sufficient information before you right now. And that would be something we'd have to wait to hear back on. Right. So maybe be the better, well, I'll say direction this evening, continue it, let them get the information back to us. I know that any developer doesn't want to hear that word continue. It's almost like the, well, I can't even say it thing, but it's a bad, very bad word. But if we were to continue it uh, to get that information from them, I know this board member would, would be able to make a much um, more informed decision. I, I think, uh, Mr. Thompson, I know, I know this board likes to um, make, make comments from time to time that some of you have been doing this longer than I've been alive, but I think it would be customary. Don't, don't like that now. Don't I think it would be customary, even at this late hour, to um, confer with the board, with the applicant on that one, see their preferences if they'd consent to a continuance first. So I think I'd rather confer with the board first, see if they want to continue it. And then, we'll, okay. and then we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> I know this gentleman is more than willing to work with, he's shown tonight, I mean, just in my observation that he's ready to do what he's got to do, but we also have to do what we got to do in order to protect these citizens that are sitting out here. Just one more made clear. So those things that we talk about on the development side, those things that you're not talking about tonight with regard to mitigation, those things that happen on this site um, he could take this back and then he could come back and proffer those. But we don't have the ability to require those on that, on that site. What we have to wait for is to wait for the state to agree that a deacceleration lane would be appropriate and whatever else we talked about on state line, on the state side. But our hope would be that after having all this discussion, that to, to the degree that is humanly possible, he would proffer these things that we're talking about tonight. But planning commission doesn't have the ability to require those on that development site, does it? You can't. If the planning commission were to pass a condition and say, thou shalt not unless A and B, A being the deceleration, B being a correct essay, that is not binding upon the state highway administration. They get to say what we want. Now, a condition phrase that way. If they can't then meet those conditions because state highway administration says no, then the approval fails. That would put us though, practically speaking, in a situation where you'd be passing conditions tonight. We don't know where they can be met, hmm. met or not. The applicant could be put in an awkward position where he would have to note an appeal to the Board of Appeals just to preserve that right, waiting for the state highway administration to get back to so us. I agree so I think with folks that spoke before. I mean, I think that while developers don't want to hear Continuance, and I understand that. What they don't want to hear is that it's been denied either. So I would rather, in my view, we could continue it to a date certain and give them an opportunity to come back and and you know and 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 hopefully. <laughs> although I hold little hope with the state of state highway, now perhaps um, we could get them. Mr. 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 Gotch. <laughs> See, you we thought go. you were going to get away from me tonight. <laughs> Not only am I going to call you up here, I'm going to make you swear before you um, before you give me any information. Just remind him it's after 10. Thank you, John. <laughs> Made me break my promise so, of 10 o'clock. So, Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. It's good to see you this evening. Um, you heard kind of what, what's going on. If this gentleman goes to the state and tries to get some information, I'm not holding you to this, but in your, your, your realm of what you've done before you got here, how long do you think it's going to take for him to get some information in? Because I have dates, continuance dates, and I'd like, to, I'd like to assign one to him as soon as possible. So I'm, I'm just going to shoot you, I'm just going to shoot you out some, 
vague dates. I mean, can you get it done in March? I'm not, I'm not holding you to it. I'm just asking you for the an opinion. Is no. But, okay. but if, if, you sign, if you assign a date, all they're asking for is a, a yes or no, mm -hmm. would this be acceptable? So that might be faster than submitting something like a design request, asking State Highway to start mm -hmm. looking at how big of a study do we need to do. Mm -hmm. They've already looked at a study. Now the question is, can we add a deceleration lane at Travel Lane? Or not Travel Lane, but the whatever the loop road is. Okay, I know it wouldn't. Wouldn't. Are you getting ready to say something to me, <laughs> Mr. Housing? Come on up. Uh oh, two attorneys. Oh my. Oh my All goodness. I would have, Mr. Thompson, is of course I trying to be efficient with my time. The moment Mr. Gotch got to speak, I scampered on back to ask Miss Greer. Uh, apparently, Miss Greer has spoken about this possibility when we could expect a response from SHA on the deceleration lane and the others. According so to according Ms. to Ms. Chandler, it's really she can have a conversation with um, State Highway, and then it's really measuring the right of way and looking at it to see if there's sufficient um, room with the right of way. Correct, Ms. Chandler. Right. We think honestly we could turn that around within a week. We would prefer to be on your next available agenda if possible. I've got the first right, well, the date hot. I can give you is March sixth. That's not that far away. But that's not the only question, though. We would have yeah. three or four things that we would like checked out. That's, I mean, just, I'm just. Yeah, yeah, but that was. What, what, we would give them all. Time to do that. That's a long pole in the tent, right? Yeah, we would. There would be three or four things that I think we would probably propose that we would like checked right. out and answered, well, not just from Before we away. take that date, what are the other things then that we need, that uh, we need answered, uh, that we think we need answered? And are they things that require the state to chime in? Well, no, that's the only thing I guess the state, because I would say that proposed right. I mean, traffic measure, whether it's a roundabout or whatever, at Travel Lane in Henry, I'm assuming at the far end of Travel, mm -hmm. is probably all internal from Mr. Rosemore and checking with where his right of ways and property are. Um, Tell us what he can the do. The decel lane. Um, we talked about. The crosswalk from Aldi's over to the Chick-fil-A, it goes right into the pickup lane at, you know, where the cars are picking up food. Doesn't seem to be a probable spot for that. And since you got three, three ways of traffic internally merging into the um, start of the order lanes, somebody brought up here, should there be a stop sign at the, to, you know, so you don't have cars just barrel down that way off of travel into the parking lot and you could have cars coming off of loop or the other way into the Chick-fil-A, you know, from the Aldi side, all trying to get into there at once. At least one of them would. You're looking for the internal circulation plan for Chick-fil-A. An internal circulation. You need to look um, at it much, much better than. You know, I think, I, I actually think not that I knew exactly where Mr. Antosh was talking about inside there, but what, what I heard the, about possibly, I, I think having the other entrance up where the entrance is into the old, the opposite of that, coming in and going up and around and kind of coming down gives them even more storage. Uh, I, I think that's what he was saying. Almost would make sense if we had just some sort of in internal working or could that possibly altered a little from the Chick-fil-A side? I mean, I don't think the stop sign, if it was left like this, would be a problem. I wouldn't assume somebody would have a problem putting the stop sign up within their, and it's not a safety thing on the roads, it's just an in, in internal. And I think that was all that I um, basically Okay. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else had any if additional. We're if we're reaching out to Chick-fil-A, it's just interesting to see how deliveries are made and where they're made, because it's not located on that. Um, yeah, there's no area for parking like a big truck like the Aldi's has back there. Yeah, well, and the drive-thrus have like those those lower things. You know, most I can't other Chick-fil-A's that I've seen, because I come down 235 early in the morning, mm -hmm. real early in the morning, they're doing it then. Okay. Yeah. So long before they're open. Yeah. No more. I mean, that's the only way they can. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And since we have Mr. Gotch there, 
You're going to be the third director I've asked this of. Could you check on that <laughs> Triangle Lane Mount Wolf roundabout? I, I drove by there the other day, last what, Thursday. What the status of that is? Yeah, there's there's one power pole that's in the way, and uh, they were running new lines just the other day. So there was not left much left on that one pole. So there be, the old poles are being re replaced by much taller poles. And once the pole gets out of the way, once Smeco gets all the power off the pole, it's going in. Okay, so all, all the Funded. property acquisition is done yep. there? Okay. Yep. There's hope, Joe. Thank Funded. you. Joe, no. <laughs> you got it. Thank man. you very I'm much. I'm gonna name that after you, Joe. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm gonna talk to folks. Okay. You heard all of what we're, what we're going to be looking for. We have a March 6th and a March 20th. March 6th. I knew that without even turning Okay, I'm, I, you're <laughs> ambitious, but no. Um, I mean, if we don't get exactly what we need that night, it might have to have another continuation date. And hopefully, just hopefully on free y'all's part, I mean, we have a list of continuation dates for cases. Now, I don't know about this next one, but if they were to say we need to continue it and they see March 20th on there and take it, then you go from March 6th and then I say, well, I can't have you back until April 17th. I'm just giving you a heads up. Okay. Does the meeting have to be open back up to public testimony if they offer new new information next time also? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh God, that that is both uh, customary and required okay. upon receipt of new information. Okay. Just let the like public know who's here. Is there like enough that? time? March 6th from today to do the two public notices. Um, we do not have to do, do the, the two public notice. notices oh. when we set um, the date and time for the continuance. Oh, okay, at this okay. So what I need before you all get all packed up is a, a, a <laughs> motion to continue it to <laughs> that date, sir. Mr. Chairman, yes. I'll make a motion to for to to continue for a continuance till March sixth. And I'll second it. I got a second by Mr. Brown. I don't think I'm going to have to do roll call on this. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um. I just want to thank the commission and also thank your staff as well as Mr. Hauser. Thank you, John. Thank you all very much. Is there any other business? Yeah. <laughs> motion to adjourn. To, I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor. Aye. Uh, thank you. We're adjourned.